All right, hello. Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging and Friends. Uh, we are playing Orbital Blues tonight. We are continuing our Stars Come Tumbling uh, campaign, our little adventure, four-week adventure. And uh, we are in part two, and uh, we left off on a, on a bit of a, on a what, what do the kids say over at GCP? A bit of a cliffy uh, as uh, <laughs> figuring out what's going to happen. It's not my joke. I'm completely stealing that. Uh, but... Um, but yeah, we'll find out what happens to old Callum and Nikki, who, uh, who, who knew, who knew insurance adjustment was so dangerous uh, as uh, they have stumbled into an interesting, <laughs> interesting little situation. Uh, but yeah, we're so we're playing Orbital Blues. If you're unfamiliar, uh, sorry for those of you who just got confused. I forgot to change the title of the stream, but we are playing Orbital Blues, uh, different kind of space game than what we were playing last night, Mothership. Uh, it's still possible I actually could get shot in the head, uh, as that uh, that has happened a few times. And she's in this game, so probably it's going to happen. Uh, but this one, however, yeah. is more <laughs> is more sad space, cowboys, firefly, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, uh, written by Sam Slaney and uh, and Zachary Cox, uh, and it's published over uh, over at Soul Muppet Publishing. Uh, if you're if you're checking this out later and you wanna wanna help us out, we got these little affiliate links in the descriptions, and I'm sure Melissa will, will drop them in the chat at some point as well. Uh, but go get your own copy. Uh, it's really, really fun. It's one of the one of the best books uh, I've seen recently. It's just the art in it is pretty amazing. It's super functional, and uh, it just kind of kind of has a good, has a style to it that really sort of sets the tone for for what you're going to be doing in the game. Uh, but enough of that. Uh, I want to I want st- I want to introduce our characters. Uh, when we began our our little adventure last week, we did it in the middle of a chase, and so we didn't really get a chance to sort of take a breath. And uh, introduce your character. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this little popcorn style. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask somebody, uh, I'll roll a die so you get to start. I want you to tell us a little bit about your character. Two things, two things I want to know. One, uh, first thing I want to know is just what's the first thing people notice about your character when you walk into a room? And then secondly, uh, go ahead and pick a different character and tell us a little anecdote about maybe one of the first times you met them, anything like that. Uh, and then, then they'll go next, and then they'll go next, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, Ashley, you are up first. Tell us about okay. Gwen. So my character is Gwen, and she is obvious. She, it's very obvious that she's a sad woman. She just has that kind of, like, gloomy, pitiful look to her. Like, I don't know how else to describe it, but she does everything about her just, just kind of just morose and sad and when she walks into a room you kind of can't help but feel sad for her because she looks so miserable um and she's on the run from her ex-husband and she's been hopping from spaceport to spaceport to you know escape from him and one of the first people of the crew that she met was actually Nikki uh he was on a balcony above where Gwen was and her husband was approaching and as he was chasing after her uh Nikki had just so happened to toss a cup of noodles onto his head and (laughs) um he ran into Gwen in the kitchens as he was on his way to get a new cup of noodle and uh, Gwen convinced him to help her get out of there I I have a signature move, apparently. Yep. Apparently. Uh, this isn't <laughs> the first time you toss noodles on the top of someone's head. Uh, okay, well, that means you're up next, Stephen. So, Stephen, what is the first thing people notice about Nikki when you walk into a room? And then, uh, yeah, pick somebody else who hasn't gone yet. That's the first time you met them. So, go ahead, Nikki. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, the very first thing you would notice is that he wears this really cheap and ugly red polyester suit. Uh just really sticks out like a a sore thumb but he wears it well is what i'm going with that's what he believes uh he i think he would have met elvis as they were both walking into like some sort of sci-fi kinkos where elvis would be like trying to print off a whole bunch of blueprints for some sort of job he's planning and Nikki would have been going in there to print off some fake business cards for his uh, insurance, fake insurance liability company. Uh, 
Noodle, obviously, is the name of the company. Uh, and we would have bumped into each other. And I, I would have looked over and seen your blueprints, be like, hey, you work in a job there? You know, start asking some questions, seeing if he's actually an engineer. Maybe I could have gotten a hook. And then I find out that he's working on something. I think that's how we would have met. Sci fi kinko. Yes, uh, <laughs> sorry, of course. I mean, it's a very regular place for people to be. Uh, you gotta make you gotta you gotta make a copy somewhere, am I right, Nikki? Come on now. Of course, the first thing you notice about old Elvis Coltrane when he walks into a room is his smile, because he's always smiling. And the smile actually reaches his eyes, because he's always happy. He's having a good time regardless where he's at or what he's doing. Even if he's stuck in a ship watching his four friends die, he's still gonna have a good time. That's what Elvis is all about. Now listen, I got a story for you. Don't tell Freddy. Whatever you do, do not mention this to Freddy. Because the first time I met Freddy, she didn't exactly meet me. You see, I had a job. I was hired by this exotic dancer. Her name was Miss Bonfain. And Miss Bonfain, she had a job for Nikki. I mean, for Elvis, that is. Sorry. I would have loved to have Nikki on that job, but he wouldn't. I didn't know him at that point. And uh, you see, I had to go to and take care of the. There was this party going on at the McGregor's place. Big to do. And, you know, I could not get in. I could not spoof the security. However, Freddy, the chef, amazing chef, by the way, she had to get uh, some out outside catering to help out with all the waitering and, and whatnot. So, you know, it was easy to spoof the catering company and get myself in the crew. So I get in. I'm serving drinks. I'm serving things here and there. I find the jewel that I'm supposed to be Nixon from the McGregor's there. And I think to myself, well, how am I going to get this uh, particular jewel out? And I think, well, you know, I bet I could crack into the fire suppression system. And all I got to do is make it look like the kitchen is on fire. So I toss a smoke bomb into the kitchen. I yell, oh, my God, what's going on on the stove? And then the fire suppression system goes off. Everybody's in a panic. And I pick up jewel and walk out the front door. Now, Jewel, I'm here to tell you, I don't normally like little dogs, but Jewel was the friendliest chihuahua I ever met in my entire life. <laughs> and when I turned her back over, I'm here to tell you, it was one of the best jobs I ever had. Now, but Freddie, I hear, got in a little wee, wee bit of trouble about that there bolognese that caught fire during that party. I don't know, but don't tell her that that was me. Ruined the whole dinner. <laughs> uh, you're up then. Uh, Melissa, what is the first thing we notice about Freddy and tell us a story about how you and Callum met, I think this was down to. Yeah. So Freddy is, uh, the chef, uh, as was mentioned, she, uh, used to work for the McGregor's and is now on the run. Uh, these, the thing that you notice first about her is that she just has this short poofy red hair. So that's kind of the first thing that sticks out when you see her. Um, and uh, she does not know that Elvis ruined her uh, meal, so we'll see if that comes up later. <laughs> um, uh, but the first time she met Callum uh, was because she had a signature dish that happened to be uh, Callum's favorite meal. Um, and so he kind of wandered into the kitchen seeing if there were any uh, leftovers after a particular meal. Uh, so I'll let Callum share what his... Uh, favorite meal was yeah. what was that favorite meal huh I would have been a black pudding supper okay yeah. nice big black pudding done in batter homemade chips salt and vinegar Aye. <laughs> no had that in years I know First I'm just, I'm just that thinking that of salt and vinegar chips now oh goodness okay <laughs> all right I need to go home at some point. Uh, now, the first thing you may uh, notice about Callum is a big broken nose, tattoo of 42 uh, along his neck. Um, almost always eating something. He's a big, tall, lanky guy. Um, yeah. And he's probably about to be dead in a couple of minutes. So, you know. We'll see. I mean, I we'll think see. it's more likely that Nikki is probably going to go. I think Callum's probably all right. But, oh, Captain, thank you for those. <laughs> Uh, we'll treat That's those. What I get for being a guest. <laughs> we'll treat those as uh, an upper hand. If you want to take one, uh, you can take an audience upper hand at some point. I'll just give you a, an extra instance of it. Uh, perfect. Um, okay. So, um, 
Let's get into the summary, right? Let's see what we did last time. So last, uh, the first session we began, we, we know that you are the crew of the Belafonte. You've all known each other for a little while now, been hunting bounties, doing various jobs, gigs, et cetera, around here. And we started right in the middle of you hunting a fellow by the name of Walter Briggs, and you were running through Agnesi Market on a moon called Harlan 5. Uh, Walter is wanted by Isheron Corp, which is a, is a corporate bounty uh, for hijacking one of their shuttles and for kind of maiming a few executives who are on that shuttle. Uh, and then uh, as you all were sort of chasing, it was kind of proving a little bit more difficult as Walter's a big old bull of a guy, uh, has a surprising reserve of energy and just really didn't want to get caught. Uh, ultimately, you were able to capture him, but it did kind of cause a little bit of a scene inside of Agnesi Market. So there's like uh, stalls that were destroyed. There was like a very angry casino bouncer who had noodles in his hair, uh, crashed taxi, stolen sedan. Uh, and uh, you you managed to cram Walter into a shipping crate. You snuck him through the starport security and onto your ship. But flight control is kind of getting weird with you and wouldn't let you leave, wouldn't kind of clear you for takeoff. But eventually Gwen had a, had a weird moment where she thought she saw her husband or ex-husband on the on security footage. And then I think it was uh, I think it was Elvis who eventually just kind of said, we're going. And you jumped up into Atmo. They fired this rail gun at you to kind of disable you, but you managed to avoid it. And uh, you were up in space. Now up there, you know, had a nice long conversation with Walter. Uh, who you're keeping in one of your uh, one of your retrofitted executive rooms, which are now basically cells, uh, and he was basically begging you not to turn him in, and he agreed to roll over on Edgar Bennett, which is like the bigger fish, and if you let him go, he'll he'll point out where to go, you know, where you can find him, all that kind of stuff. Edgar Bennett is the son of a you know of a crime family, uh, one that controlled much of Harlan Five's uh, uh, industry. You all tentatively agreed, and you learned that the Bennetts keep their main headquarters in an unfinished skyscraper uh, that's in the, this kind of skeletal city that overlooks Agnesi Market. You also learned that Edgar uh, has his own kind of custom barge cruise ship uh, called the Rhinestone Cowboy that he occasionally uses for pleasure cruises around the rim uh, of, the, of the system. And he also has a home away from home on wayside side of Harlan Fives, this whole, this whole side of the moon that's just wastes, and it's really just occasional agricultural communes and stuff that are popping up over there uh you tracked him there uh so you you kind of got to get the feel that his his ship was at his at his sort of wayside home uh there was some discussion on what to do about that and ultimately uh four of you uh decided to to go towards the uh go towards his home uh freddie and gwen you were going to stealth towards edgar's ship hoping to sabotage it or something like that uh, Nikki and Callum, uh, you were going around to the front of the house, uh, and uh, it's a two-story, really nice-looking house, pretending to be insurance adjusters, and you knocked on Edgar's door. You were led inside without trouble, uh, and uh, as you were led into this this living room area by one of Edgar's armed guards, you discovered that Edgar was not alone, that he was apparently hosting a very familiar f face for Callum, uh, a man by the name of Brendan McGregor. McGregor crime family who has a somewhat unpleasant history both with Callum and Freddie that we'll get into uh, as time goes on so we're gonna pick up right there I think uh I just think cause... there was a, a slight mistake in the recap there I'm sorry. uh I'm pretty sure that Nikki was on the ship and Elvis was pretending to be the insurance <laughs> uh, let me check my notes. Now, you know, let me check my that's, notes. A, that's a very funny idea I think but I, I'm here to tell you Elvis does not make those kind of mistakes he thinks his yeah. plans through yeah, because I have here in my notes that Elvis is clever and Nikki is not. So oh, yeah, yeah. okay, okay, that that, that lines up. That lines up. Yeah, I feel my bad for Callum because say... mine says loyal and. Uh, yeah. My notes say that Elvis has a plan to save us all. Uh huh. I am. Elvis has a plan now. Whether or not it's going to save us all, it's or not. Be, uh, who knows? <laughs> Elvis and Walter. That's what the next episode will be. Okay, but it's a buddy cop. It's 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 going to be fantastic. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we're inside this kind of uh, retro sort of future. It kind of got like a 70s vibe going on in here. It's a sunken living room, shag carpeting, kind of marble everywhere else you see. You see this circular uh, plush uh, kind of off, uh, this is just off red uh, couch that uh, both, uh, both Edgar Bennett and Brendan are sitting on. There's a couple women that are at their sides as well. 
you've been led into this room by a man with a the big shotgun and, and as you look around you see there are other guards in here as well some you can see callum have that kind of familiar uh some something that would probably uh tell you that they're they're likely brendan's people uh so whether it's like a specific color or a specific suit or a specific weapon something like that that would lead you to believe these these are probably who brendan brought with him uh and both uh and so both both Edgar and, and, and Brendan kind of look up at you, and Brendan's got kind of a the maimed hand and a kind of a maimed foot. And he looks up, and his face starts going really red. And he's like, you've got a lot of nerve. I'm not going to do a Scottish accent because I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to get it wrong. Like, so I can just do, do it. Come on. Oh, God. On. I, can just, but... I can just do generic, grungy British accent. That's yeah, all there I we go. I'll be fine. See now, see now. Okay, like, you've got a lot of nerve coming around here. He says as he starts to get up, and uh, you can see like he starts to try to waddle a little bit. He's like limping. His foot is still like in some kind of special special boot that just kind of throwing his balance off. And um, you uh, before he gets like around it, you just you just hear Edgar go. Now, now, there's no reason for anyone here to get upset. I think we can all be friends here. Isn't that right? Uh, what were your names again? Now I remember what I lost in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. My name Robert. was... <laughs> my name was uh, Chance Clover, and this is uh, Bruce Roberts. Uh, like I said, we're, we're just here for insurance. I, I don't know why anyone would be upset. We're, we're trying to pay you. No, uh, I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate what you're doing there, Chance. I definitely appreciate someone who commits to the gag, uh, but uh, I gotta gag, tell you, it is more of a bet than a gag. A bit, that's a fair one as well. Uh, but uh, as you can see, uh, your fen here has some history with my friend, and I feel that that's going to turn. Uh, it's going to turn our little insurance discussion sideways here. Uh, Bruce, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to come clear, Chance. My name's I, Bruce. What? Since when? You've been lying to me? I'm sorry. I oh, met uh, your wife. Edgar is just leaning back with this big old grin on his face watching this play out. But Brendan's got this, like, his face is red with anger. And he's like, one of the, the woman that was kind of sitting on the couch is kind of holding on to his, his, his good hand, not letting him kind of move any further. Um, I would say, Callum, you, would, you could tell that you, you guys are kind of triangulated. You can see that there's one guard that's, that's kind of eyeing each of you. And then there's another guard that's sort of sweeping behind. Like, you're pretty well surrounded here. Elvis is just listening in on comms. He's like, sure. Yo, Wally, would you like extra butt on your popcorn? Because this show is getting good. I mean, delicious popcorn here. I make some of the best. The air fry over there is so... It, no, well, hold on. They're getting ready to talk again. We get Listen in. Listen in. Let me, let me pump up the speakers a little bit there, Wally. You got you to gotta hear this. <laughs> get some popcorn. <laughs> it's very agreeable. Um, So... Callum, do you, do you want to do anything before it uh, looks like they're going to launch into something? Right, anything so we're surrounded, yeah? Yeah, you're pretty surrounded. Oh, well. See, you didn't get matching gloves, Brendan. I mean, the shoe's all right, but the gloves... You know, uh, How are you, yeah. Grant? <laughs> he kind of looks at you. His face gets even redder. That's going to happen. Looks down at Edgar... Come on, just let me kill him. Just Edgar, you can Edgar, have the other on. one. No, hold on a minute, pal. Right, because your friend's here with Brendan, eh? Because you should have heard what he said about your mall last time he was visiting. He's you a see, right dirty bastard. His, his grin just gets even bigger. And he's like, and then he kind of leans forward. Edgar does. He kind of folds his hands underneath his chin. And he's like, no, really now. What is it what? that he said about old mama? Aye, well, I'm trying to think of something that I can see on stream. 
Uh, I, everything's fine. Ever so slightly shifting away from Caleb. <laughs> like I'm not trying to make any sudden movements, but I if, if gunfire bursts out, I don't want to be close to him. Nikki's okay. just like hands up, <laughs> stepping back. I don't even know this guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's been lying to me. <laughs> well, he was saying awful things about him. Saying he'd have her any night of the week. Really? And kind of looks I up said she wasn't scary at all. You and my mother have been uh, having some carnal relations, have you? And he's like, "Oh well, no, he wanted to." But he's saying, saying she was uh, she wasn't scary enough for him. He kind of leans down. Too weak a like, woman. Mm, well, that's an interesting one right there. I definitely like that one. Uh, what was your name again? Your real one. Uh, Not whatever the, the weird all names fella said. Are yeah. You mean the, the one I was born with? Callum. That's the one. Nice there we go. That. Callum. Callum. I've never... How How could you have applied? <laughs> well, why don't you all go ahead and just have a seat here? There's no reason we can't... Uh, we can't all just have a nice conversation. No reason we have to turn this into anything more than a kind of civil, civil conversation. You know, I I have to start by apologizing. I would have I I've been working this job for fifteen years. I I would have never ever brought an associate if okay. I knew that there Weesh. would be. Uh... We. <laughs> Nikki, I, I, I don't know who you. Nikki. I don't know who Nikki is. My name is Chance. I have a business card here, and I pull out some Kinko's business card. <laughs> He's like, I'll "Go ahead and take one of those." I'm very curious to see the craftsmanship, to see if your yep, yep. your prop work is any better or worse than your improv better. here. <laughs> you got any apples? No, we do uh, actually. We do. We got all sorts of fruit. And you hear like a snap. Of his finger as he leans back, you know, Edgar does. And you watch as this, like, android butler, this, like, really robotic-looking thing kind of shuffling. And it's carrying this big old tray. And you can see there's some fruit and there's some some drinks and some uh, some various bottles. And it just kind of reaches out. And then very slowly you see its arms kind of shift and start to lay, you know, lay them down. It's very rough. There's nothing smooth about this at all. But eventually it puts the tray down on this large, sprawling coffee table in front of you. And uh, now, they're not so much good at making the drinks, but they can, you know, fetch things for you. But uh, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't offer you all the, all the drink here, as you all are now guests in my home. Is there something I can get you there? What are you, what are you drinking? Captain thanks the, the droid. And takes an apple. Oh, okay, go right ahead. Sure, help yourself. What about you there, uh, Nikki? Uh, water? Water would be great, thank you. <laughs> water? Well, that's a little harder to come by than some of these other things here, but I, I'll go ahead and I'll oblige. Well, no whatever problem. is convenient, whatever's easy, whatever's no, on hand. You you, said you, water, no, it's... I don't need anything. I don't need anything. It's no, fine. It's, it's fine. That's no, Bushki you Bear. Said... Whiskey beer means whiskey. Let's go. Yeah. Well, listen here. Why don't you go ahead? And he kind of just kind of pats. You can tell Edgar is just, just getting a kick out of all of this. And he just kind of pats Brendan on the side. It's like, come on, old Brendan. Come on, sit on down now. You don't want anything. Nothing's, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen here. We're going to talk like a uh, like, like grown man. This is what we all, bygones be bygones and such. Oh, Brendan, can he speak like a grown man? <laughs> and his face is just getting redder and redder and Edgar's just like boy you push it I like the I, I like these two right here this one here ain't scared of nothing and this one here is too dumb to know when to be scared that's pretty great that's, that's good I can use a couple folks like y'all I could I could now I'll, let me see if I have it right here he kind of leans back takes a little swig He's a very strange-looking guy. Like his his complexion's a little off. You can tell that something's not quite right. Um, like he's maybe ill in some way, uh, or at least he just doesn't get a lot of sun. You're not you're not really sure. And he's like, now, 
I got, I, I had a, a few calls earlier, and uh, I heard a, a compatriot or an employee of mine, a fellow by the name of Walter Briggs, had been apprehended in the market. It was apparently uh, quite an adventure. Now, I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to uh, put two and two together. That maybe old Walter, uh, maybe his lips started flapping a little bit in ways they probably shouldn't have. Would you say that's about right there, Callum, Nicky? Uh, he's not very self-confident in his abilities as a criminal. Yeah. His that bounties just aren't high enough. But about that, I think he'd be all right. I tried to give him more responsibility, but he has uh, he has not lived up to his end of the bargain, uh, unfortunately. Uh, menial labor and just sort of looking menacing seem to be his only real uh, qualities that you can rely upon. But that, nonetheless, is an important uh, important group of skills. I'm sorry, this is a lot to take in, Bruce. You're a bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, for the moment, let's kick over then to where Freddie and Gwen are, and we'll come back. As Freddie and Gwen have been hiding, uh, you snuck up to the landing pad outside of Bennett's house, and there is this, uh, you can see his, uh, his custom ship there, which is uh, roughly the same size as yours, but this one's more just like a kind of a boxy look to it, and you can see it's, it's much, much better maintained sitting up on these landing legs and everything there is like a security hut of some kind or it's kind of hard to tell it's like you could tell definitely tell that there seems to be a, a small building nearby which you've seen somebody in uh, but you have you're currently ha- hiding behind one of the the legs the landing legs landing struts what what would the two of you like to do So if I remember, when we scanned the ship, we saw that there were people. We don't the know ship. if they were people necessarily, but we know that there was like life. Life forms. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to see if we can kind of crack this thing open and get inside. Okay. So I won't make you reroll your, sa- your savvy for stealth, but uh, you are trying to get onto a ship. Uh, so you can see that there's kind of a ramp that goes up. You can kind of keep stealthing to get up there but how do you all want to go about trying to as you as you get up there it is locked like there is security on these vessels so how do you want to to go about doing that do either of you particularly good at this if elvis would be this would be easy as, as can be but what about the two of you uh not not so good i don't think not super great uh, Elvis gave us this like uh, chip he said for us to try and like put in there to do that whole reset reboot of the system. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping if there's a way that we can apply it to something on the outside. Uh, well, I mean that's for the system. This is more. I don't know, Elvis. What, what did what, what did you have in mind when you give that to them? Like I was thinking that was something you put into the mainframe to kind of reboot the, the yeah. system itself. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gwen. I, I had no idea you were going to have to try to get into the ship on your own. Because, I mean, really, this is an interface for the computer system. Once you get in, boot up the system, you plug this in, you should be able to then reset the security parameters to fly the ship. But uh, getting in the door, you know, that's just a simple lockpick. Okay, okay, but you realize we don't do lockpicks. That's your job. Oh, yeah, I know. I, and, and that's why I thought to myself, why are they going to the ship? I'm mean, definitely going to get themselves killed. But, you know, hey, I respected your moxie and your desire to expand on your on your skill sets. So when you decided to go, I thought to myself, well, Wally and I will pop some popcorn. We'll listen to the show. We'll see what's going on. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure you'll be fine. You're just just jiggle things. Just jiggle a few things. Look, guys. Room for you. It's good popcorn, too, because, I mean, I, just the right amount of salt, and it's pink. It's pink Himalayan sea salt. It's the stuff I smuggled in from my last job, and I'll just lightly buttered through layers, layers of popcorn butter. It's delicious. Yeah. Wally it's really loves good. it. It's really good. It's really good. I haven't eaten in, like, 
four days. So it's I mean, really good. Yeah, that's that, that's what people do when they don't actually know how to cook well. They just smother everything in butter and then everything tastes better. That's what exactly. you, know, you don't really have good cooking skills. Exactly, Freddie. I mean, okay, this is not the time. Oh, it's, she's, that's a good point. You're making a very good point. I mean, we're, we're actually we're, we're really kind of focused in on the main show, the Callum and uh, Callum and Nikki show, because that's mean? about What's to happening? get really. Oh, oh, they for sure got busted. McGregor's in there and uh, I'm pretty sure he's setting them up to torture them to death, but he's doing it in a very nice way with water and apples. Which so, I mean, should, it's hard to follow. Leave. Which McGregor? Which, which McGregor's in there? I uh, want uh, Brendan. To leave. Brendan McGregor's Ready? in there. I want Brendan to McGregor. leave right now. And it's, it's, it's a very, it's, now I've got a plan. What? That, I mean, it may not help you two because you're, you're definitely in the wrong position. But I mean, I got to get Wally on board though first. Uh, but you know, if things continue to go really bad for all four of you, I'll do something. Uh, but um, yeah, just jiggle the lock. Pull out your lock picks. Okay, pull out your lock picks and you got to pull that front panel off. And then there's usually three wires in there and you got to figure out which two to cut. And then you put them and they, listen, you'll be fine. You'll be fine when you got this. I, I got it. I got a knife and I'm going to tell you what color the wires are. All right. Sure. All right. Sure. That's that. That'll work for sure. Right. I'll give you a savvy so, Wally, they're, they're so going to die, Wally. This is going to be so bad. But listen, he can he's still gonna feed hear him. you. He's oh, going to oh, feed shit, him sorry. to the pigs. <laughs> it's the last thing you hear is oh. pigs. <laughs> <It goes down. laughs> um, so go ahead and roll a savvy. I'll give you a upper hand uh, because Elvis is sort of talking you through it. Okay. Uh, so, I yeah. imagine that wow. Nikki and Caleb are hearing this rattle off in the back, yeah, too. Yeah, I would imagine, too. We haven't really defined how communications work, but this is too fun for it not to be that way. Yeah. Uh, uh, can yeah. Ivy just, like, keeping watch while she does this? Roll an observation check, which is just straight up 2d6. It's a roll an 8, Nine. right? Yeah, you have to roll an 8. Yeah, 8 Good. is a success. Night. No. I rolled a We're, six. We got like an hour and a half still. You so. got advantage though, right? <laughs> I did. I rolled the oh. one on my other dice. Upper so. hand. You can spend okay. the heart yeah. though. Upper hand. Upper hand. Oh, yeah, you right. can spend heart. Oh, I can. Yeah. Although I don't know how many I have. I Any, have six. Anyone forgets, we can spend heart to reroll Jeff's dice as well. Yes, that's Just true. <laughs> I haven't even had a roll any. That's great. <laughs> And is that a one for one or is this a straight reroll? I forget. One for one. Uh, one for one, yeah. So you All can, right, so I'll try rerolling that one. And see if I can do better than the one. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, darn it. Okay. <laughs> I got a three, so now I have a seven. So okay. I still fail. All right. Uh, how do you do, Gwen? Uh, I rolled a nine, so I okay. passed. So you notice that there appear to be two people outside, uh, one of whom you can see is inside whatever kind of booth that is. They got their feet up on the on, on some kind of table. They're reading through something. Uh, you can see another one is is kind of walking from outside of a outside like of a back like this kind of back door uh, that closes on the on the on the main building itself. They don't notice you because they're not really looking your way, but it looks like they're carrying some kind of sacks uh, and they're bringing them over towards the the sort of the pig dome, that pig greenhouse. Um, but they don't see you. However, Freddie, you uh, you're trying to like hack into this uh, into this the security door and you're doing everything that you think Elvis was telling you to do. You're pretty sure you got it right. Then all of a sudden it doesn't work. Uh, but you do hear a uh, Gwen, you immediately notice over by the security, that little security booth that the guy who had his feet up on the, up on the, the desk is now dropped them. And he's kind of dropped whatever like paper or whatever he's reading. He's kind of standing up and he's working his way out. You have a moment to do something before he's he's gonna see you. Uh, we need to hide, or or kill him. Hey, hey Freddie, if that buzzing I'm hearing, that's yep. that's that's an alarm. I think I I, I definitely <laughs> think you did that wrong. I, I yeah. I'm just here to tell. You, I don't uh -huh. think that was quite right. Yep, yep. Th thanks for that. I, I don't I don't think you uh, told me the right thing to do. That's possible. I mean. It's only my professional opinion. I could be very mistaken. So yeah, Gwen's Gwen's gonna hide. Uh Okay. Uh go ahead and roll savvy. Uh I will say you're in a, a slight precarious situation as you're kind of on a landing pad. 
Okay. Uh, there's not a ton of places to hide other than like behind a strut, but you can tell he's he's probably gonna walk over and investigate what's going on here, and that might reveal yeah. you. She wants to like ambush him as he gets closer. You want to set up an ambush? Okay. So yeah. if that's the case, uh, I'll say roll a savvy test, uh, and you don't go ahead. Yeah, just go ahead. Roll straight savvy test. Freddie, what are you doing? Uh, Freddie is going to uh, kind of have this knife at the ready to throw at him. Okay. So are you just gonna stay up by the the door then? You're kind of an open, an open position. Yeah, I, I'll I'll swing around a little bit, but I know I'm not necessarily gonna be able to hide. So I'm just gonna try to be kind of in this peripheral vision so that I can throw the knife at him when he comes out. Okay. Uh, okay. If that's the case, uh, if you're not if you're not doing that, he comes on out, and he sees you kind of hopping down from the ramp that goes up, and he calls out, "Hey, get your ass back here!" And you start you see him start reaching for what looks like his waist where he's pulling a gun out uh, and he starts chasing after you. Uh, Gwen, I give you, before he gets a shot off, uh, I'll go ahead and say you found one of these struts to hide behind. You might be able to, to sort of pounce on him if you would like. Uh, so well, go yeah, ahead. I got a nine. Okay, so you got a nine. Go right ahead and I'll say take your, take your ambush here. Uh, that's fine. We can do a little ambush and then we'll get into proper initiative. Okay. If, if if it's still necess- necessary, so um, actually no, let's just do let's just do initiative uh, because I think it's if he's surprised by you, it's more he doesn't get to uh, to act on the first turn. That's what it is. Okay, so go ahead and roll a d three, uh, add your savvy, and if you have any gambit modifiers, add that as well. Oh my gosh, hey. d three. I did not have that prepared. I am gonna need to just roll uh, d six divided by two. Got Put it. This dice into dice jail because it just wants to keep rolling ones. I got a three. And that's plus your plus your savvy and everything? Oh, four. I got a three. All right. This is my total. Okay. Gwen, you will get to go first. Uh, all right. Then he also has a four, but Gwen, you're going to be going first. And then, uh, Freddie, you have a three. And then we'll figure out next round if the other guy manages to, to pay attention to this. So... All right, so Gwen, describe what you do. As he, he he's pulling for his gun, as he's going he's going after Freddy. Freddy is like reaching back with a knife. Uh, so we'll say first round, we'll just do like a round between you and him. You, essentially, you're getting a free action. Just get a free action. Okay. Um, I want to try and disarm him. Okay. So you just want to like leap out from behind one of the struts. Uh, yeah. One of the landing and struts like and just try to knock arm. his gun out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll say go ahead and you can either pick muscle if you just want to like muscle it out or you can yeah. pick, is that, is that what you want, want to do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, upper hand cause he doesn't see you. Uh, so with upper hand, I got two sixes then plus two. Okay. So 14. Hey. Uh, you, as he's reaching for it, the guns coming up and you just smash him right in the right in the side he doesn't even see he's like what the and the gun just goes tumbling off to the side uh ways away from everybody uh and so now it's just him and you locked in close quarters cool. freddy uh you're off to the side uh since gwen was setting up the ambush we'll just sort of cycle back and start now normal initiative so gwen take another action as we'll in, we're in proper initiative now um now gwen would try to smother his mouth so he can't scream okay or anything all right, uh, go ahead and, uh, yeah, I'll say probably muscle. Muscle? Cool. Uh, are you a big person? Would you call it, consider yourself large? Um, I'd say she's, like, medium but muscular. Okay, medium but muscular. Okay, all right. So with upper hand, I got a six and a four plus two, so six, 12. Okay, so you reach up and you grab... <laughs> Uh, that's fine. Uh, his turn, uh, as he'll go next, as you have, you, and he'll, I think what he's just going to try to do is do one of those classic, like, just smash you up against a, a rock or a wall nearby. So you're right next to the strut. He kind of maneuvers you around. And he's just going to smash you into the back of the, uh, of the, uh, or into the side of the strut, the landing strut. So this is going to be... Hmm. I'm going to treat this like a, a, basically like a melee, I okay. think. All right. So nothing special. Yeah. 
So that's going to be four points of damage coming your way there, Gwen, as I rolled a five, a three, and a four. Eight will be a success. I'll use my four for damage. So when we're rolling combat, it's mainly three, three die, three d6 you're rolling. You use two to, you pick the two that you want to hit the target. Uh, in this case, it should be eight, unless you have some shenanigans I don't know about. Not okay. that I know of. So the eight, the eight will hit with a five and the three, and he does four points of damage to you. Oh gosh, that that hurts. It comes yeah. off your heart. Combat yeah, in this yeah. is not, it's, it's, it's deadly. Again, our first game of Best Left Buried, I one-shot a guy with the very first yeah. roll. Okay, so, oh. Freddy, your turn. You see that she, he he's just slammed Gwen up. Now, Gwen's holding on for dear life, and so he hasn't yet been able to scream. You look over your shoulder, the guy who's got, gone off to feed the pigs doesn't hasn't actually noticed what's going on yet. No gun was, no, no, no shot was fired. No Nothing mm-hmm. was shouted too loud yet. He shouted at you a little bit, but it wasn't too terrible. What would you do, Freddy? Uh, I, goodness. I want to try to knock him out, but I'm not so good with the muscle. Um, can I try to knock him upside the head with the knife? Uh, yeah, you want to do like, uh, you're just trying to do like non-lethal damage. Yeah. So like just hit him with the, yeah, it's fine. All right, and I am going to take one of these upper hands because, yeah. Um, sorry. Here. All right, that's three of these. Let me... That's much better. Okay, so you're 11. doing three dice. So you're doing no, no. Oh, you, that's you right. Roll three dice. Two of them you use to make your attack, like your to hit roll. So add them together. You want to hit an eight or above. And then the, whatever's left over is what you do for damage. All right. So I rolled a six, a five, and a five. So I'm going to take the two fives for the to hit, which leaves mm-hmm. me six for damage. Okay. So you come up, and with the sort of the, the blunt side, the, the the hilt of the dagger, you just right into the temple. And you just go, <laughs> go and you hear him like, you just hear him scream into your into your hand, kind of bite down on the inside of your palm. Kind of hurts for a second, but you hang on. Uh, you can feel him kind of swaying and getting ready to drop. He's not quite as big as Walter, but he's a big dude. Um, so we'll come back up to the top. Gwen, he's not completely out yet, but you can tell he's swaying, and it looks like he's about to drop if there's just something else you can do. <laughs> Everyone but me. Aww. Aww. Have I done? Uh, oh, no, does it? Can it do any like suffocation? Kind of like make him lightheaded, or? Uh, I mean, that's going to take a lot longer and, like, than just a couple. Punch him in the s- head. Yeah, I think you probably are better off just doing it that. Like suffocation is probably a longer period of time to get that. For Got him. it. Okay, so I do four damage. That is enough. So. You, you're holding on, you're holding on. He's stumbling forward in a way. It gives you an out with your left hand. You kind of pull it back and just smash him right in the back of the head. And you just fall on top of him. And he falls down to the ground. And now you have about a six foot three, 230 pound man laying on the ground. Gun cast to the side. There's somebody else out here feeding pigs. And you can hear them starting to go a little crazy. Uh, what do you do with the body? Freddy, get that fucking ship open so we can drag him in. All right, all right. All right. Could we maybe we can drag him into this little shed here? Uh, I think the shed's a little far away, isn't it, Jeff? Uh, it's not too far. Like it's on the outside of the landing pad. So like you're basically just had a fight underneath the ship on the landing pad. If you can, you can drag him off. It, you can do it. Like the two of you oh, okay. can do it. It's just a big yeah. guy. That's all. I say we okay. get him in there. There's probably something in there to tie him up with. Okay. okay. So the two of you head over to that shed where he was sitting down, and we'll cut back inside. Uh to where Nikki and Callum and Edgar and Brendan, who is still absolutely steaming beet red, like his, his, it's a comp, it's a competition between his face and this apple in terms of what is actually, uh, was, was it actually redder? And you can see, and yeah, go ahead. No, I said, and Nikki's so. Oh, Nikki's, that's true. Nikki's yeah, so, yeah, that's true. So, uh, so Edgar kind of, you know, he's, 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 He's been observing all of this. He's got he's this grin, this like crooked grin. It almost looks like, you know, he's like his his gums are kind of bleeding here and there when he grins. But he looks out and he says, So yeah, here's the thing, fellas. Uh 
There's a few ways this could go. And I, I don't necessarily want violence in my home. Uh, you know, it's not really the kind of guy I am. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a peaceful man. Uh, I don't really I don't like to hurt people, so to speak. I employ people to do that for me. And, uh... uh what a coincidence. We don't like hurting people either. We're all on the same page here. Oh. Well, that's a shame then, because, uh... I was gonna offer you all a get out of my my pig pen free card. You know, I was gonna you say. You want me to Brendan? What's that? So you want me to shoot Brendan? I can do that. I mean, he's still got the <laughs> other hand. <that> can... <laughs> and he's like, well, well, maybe, but not just, today. Just keep it and keep it in mind. Oh, oh, definitely. I'll file that away up here. And Brendan kind of gives him like this horrible look, and he's like. I'm just having a little fun with you, Brendan. Calm, calm down. You're wound up a little too tight. Just too tight. So here's the thing there, uh, Mr. Nicky, Mr. Callum. I, uh, as you can tell from capturing Walter, I appear to have a, uh, a bit of a dearth of, uh, of, uh, quality, uh, freelancers. And, uh, I do have some work that might, uh, might be beneficial to a, to have folks a little off the payroll, you know, distant from the Bennett, the Bennett family. It's a few odds and ends here that I'd rather not blow back into the family's orbit. And uh, if you're all interested in leaving the house and the grounds alive, well, perhaps we can come to mutual agreement here. Well, I mean, uh, I'm a lonely lowly insurance adjuster but if i can help you in any way shape or form i would be very happy to do so oh yeah yeah lowly indeed okay well what about you there mr cow now i want to assure you i know uh i don't know the full extent of the details you and my uh associate here mr mcgregor i don't know He's the full ex- yeah that might be true that might be true and you can tell, like, this whole time, like, like the McGregor guy is just getting angrier and angrier and angrier. But he is still not doing anything about it. Like, he's he won't do anything about it. Like, Edgar is just the one in control. You're getting the sense that this is the guy. Like, you, he's, he's afraid to cross him kind of deal. And he's like, well, I can assure you, though, that whatever uh, task I... Uh, I offer my you know my employee of it is independent of supporting him, so you can have that free of your conscience there. Oh, it's nothing to do with conscience. I just don't like the asshole. No, sure, sure, fair enough, fair enough. He is an acquired taste that I have yet to properly acquire. So it's poison. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Well, I do have a very large supply of that, however. That's a different story for a different day. You see, uh, do y- y'all know about my family? I know enough over. to pay my respects. Sure, sure. Well, I, you see, I, I I had a brother once. And he's a my best friend. Uh, he was a, uh, you know, you could say he was. Uh, he was closer to a father than me. My own father was, you know, and. Uh, well, he passed away, unfortunately, and uh, I have never gotten proper retribution for that death, as it was not as some might expect in the wars with some of the other families. It was, it was a different, a different killer, you should say, a killer that's very difficult for me to make a move upon. However couple freelancers like yourself with no actual connection whatsoever to me well well i think that would work just fine and of course i would make it very much worth your while but jeff first of all do we know anything about the brother was he an asshole like edgar or uh, I mean, they're a crime family, so they're never going to be like too good of people yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, but taking people to pegs and shit. 
But from what you know, Edgar is the creepy one. Uh, everything you've, everything you know about the Bennett family, Edgar is the one who is is the is something's not right with that guy. Um, Cast the we mother. Know if he's like, okay. is he like the black sheep of the family? Sort like, of. Or is he? So he doesn't necessarily get along with the rest of the family, despite being family. Right. You got it. Well, let go. I can understand that, and I. It's something I, I I would not be averse to doing. I have one tiny little favor to ask, though. What's that? Don't do anything to Walter. Walter, well, uh, I had thought about uh, teaching him a bit of a lesson, as he is a very slow learner, you might say. But believe uh, me, mate, his pants are brown already. You don't need to teach him anything else. He won't make the same mistake again. He is not I said, what I would call brave. Uh, I'll tell you what there, Callum. You uh, you go ahead and you take care of this little bit of business for me, and uh, I'll fill up your uh, your accounts, and you can have yourself uh, Walter as a friend. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but I had your brother was a good one. Oh, he was, uh, tell me who he was the best. He was indeed. Uh, dignified, smart, strong, and loyal. So completely different to Brendan, then. <laughs> you just don't quit. You're like that old bunny that just kept going on and on and on. Hey, don't you wanted worry. the heart of friend of mine. Under my house, you'll be just fine. I cannot I speak was... for what might happen if you uh, encounter each other I... in a different locale. Yeah, it's not me that wouldn't be fine. He doesn't get to hurt my friends. All right. Maybe keep him in your house while I'm about, because otherwise, Oof. you know, accidents. Well, at this that... point, yeah, go ahead. Uh, there would be like a switch flipping in Nikki where he was in character uh, and he was like shaking as he was like holding his water and drinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he just switches and he's completely calm. Uh, he stands up a little straighter, uh, sets the glass down. All right, Mr. Bennett, you're a smart man. I'm sorry that I poorly attempted to deceive you. Uh, I did not believe that my companion here would give up the bag so quickly. However, Mm. I do have a counter offer for you. Would you be opposed to us speaking a little more privately? Uh, most of these people in the room are fine, but that guy right there just, he, he seems like he would talk a lot. And I'm pointing to McGregor. Well, uh, beg your pardon here, but I don't know you all that well. So a personal conversation might be a, a bit of a tall task, but uh, I will. Uh, Brendan, why don't you go ahead and head on upstairs with, uh, with Gail here and to you can play some music and get some drinks and I'm sure you'll be just fine. And Brendan's like getting all like, what are you talking? No, I'm not going to. No, 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 no. Yeah. Go ahead. I want to talk to Mr. Mr. Nicky here. Is there a last name there, Mr. Nicky? Nicky Fontaine. Nicky. But Fontaine. Just call me Mr. Nicky. That's Fontaine. fine. Okay. No, no, no. That That's too formal. Nicky is fine. Nicky's fine. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, there's a business arrangement here, but uh, nonetheless. And after a moment, you see like the you know, the guard, one of the guards uh, for the the uh, the McGregor guy kind of goes up, leads the way up the stairs, and then Gail and uh, and and Brendan go up, and then followed by the other guard. But there's still other people down here, and you don't see as if he's making a move to let anybody else leave. Like there's still guard, there's still Brendan's own guard, just as the other woman here, and he just leans back. Mr. Speak Bennett, away. I cannot thank you enough. Uh, it, it is a pleasure to formally make your acquaintance as well. Uh, as you already knew, uh, we are admittedly bounty hunters, and we did pick up Walter, as Caleb has uh, said. And let me just start at the beginning here. We picked up Walter, and you were spot on. You, you have that keen intelligence, I can tell, where uh, Walter did lead us to a bigger fish. However, I, I want you to know that we never 
ever would have thought of targeting you. Uh, let's be honest, it, the security around here is fantastic. Uh, no, you are not the bigger fish. And I, I hope I don't offend you at all, but the fish we were actually led to is slightly bigger than you as well. Uh, Ma Bennett. You're going after uh, my mother. Ricky. Now, now I, I, I know that this is, uh, uh, people's mothers are sacred. I completely understand. But like I said, we are, we're bounty hunters. We're, we're not assassins. So that's why I have to do this counter offer because we, we, we can't kill people for you. And, you know, Ma Bennett would be fine and out of your way. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, Walter apparently had some sort of friend. Uh, I'm sorry to say that Walter wasn't the only leak in your operation. Hmm. There is uh, some sort of source uh, that was able to grant Walter some sort of uh, clearance codes. He, we would have never even gone on this operation except Walter produced a hard drive that according to our tech is legitimate wow. and all we wanted to do was uh get on your little ship and just plop a little transponder on there it would have called ma uh, and we would have just very quietly taken her in well i i think that there could be a way for us to work towards each other's benefit well i'm glad like to hear said, that last part at least but I have no desire to see anything bad happen to my mother. Oh, I no, love no, her nothing so. bad ever. Uh, the thing is, though, this could pave the way for a new leadership structure in the Bennett family, could it not? Oh, I see where no, you're Callum's heading. away from Nikki. <laughs> 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 I see where you're heading with this, Mister Fontaine. And while I, well, am... I and I understand, mothers are sacred, so that that's why let's meet in the middle here. You've got some siblings that you may not be too fond of, right? And well, these siblings may be, I unfortunately let's say next in line. Have no other sibling but Mac Cooper, who has unfortunately passed now. There is, you might say, an obstacle. And that and is exactly that what I would be? like you to help me remove. But it is not my mother. I have nothing but love for my mother. Well, of course, of course, everyone does. Uh, the thing is, we are bounty hunters, not assassins. So we could just pick up a bounty, and then that like obstacle are... could easily be removed. Just splitting hairs, but if it would make your conscience Some bounty cleaner... Some dead or alive. That's that is very true. Thank you, Mr. Grant. There, bounties can be dead or alive, so you do in fact kill. Now, there is the slight complication that the target doesn't officially have a bounty on their head, uh, but if it would make your conscience clear, you can just deliver them to me, and well, I can take care of the rest now, can't I? Uh. Well, you know, for us to appear legitimate, there needs to be a legitimate reason to apprehend this bounty. Oh, I see. I understand. Well, let me again, as apparently all I can do today is just ease your conscience. Uh, we're, no, talking, no, no, it, it, we're talking about my I, beloved sister-in-law, Miss Betty Dubois who has managed in the years since my brother's passing to uh, nestle up close to my mother and feed into her ear various evil plots and plans and weaponize the love of her children. Uh, in that order is to, just awful. It, it is indeed. And if that wasn't enough, well, Betty is responsible for the death of my brother, and uh, I am well aware of this. And although my mother would not listen to uh, my prosecution of her, uh, it is nonetheless fact. Well, uh, I think we can absolutely help each other out. I, I would be more than happy to help you out. Let, let me phrase it that way. I, I'm enthusiastic about this. Uh, there, there's a lot of energy here. We're, we're problem solving together. You, you feel this, this energy in the room. It's fantastic. Uh, Excellent. Our... Our operation has invested considerable resources into that plan that I've already divulged to you. Uh, I believe that it could be just easily repurposed 
uh, for your sister-in-law. Uh, we just put the little transponder on your ship there. Uh, she starts coming and we just pick her up on the way in space. We, we got a nice little retrieval drone. We got a little hacking script. Like I said, we've invested considerable resources. This is top of the line. Oh, Mr. Fontaine, your intellect is dizzying and impressive. Nonetheless, uh, I must again uh, point out a flaw. Uh, there is no reason uh, under this, uh, this sky or any other uh, that my sister-in-law would ever come running and be anywhere near the same side of the moon as myself. So that is a very large flaw there. But the bright side Like is... I said, you know, there, there's a great energy in this room. We're problem solving. We're coming up <laughs> oh, with things. Absolutely. We find obstacles. We, we jump those obstacles. We well, move on to the next obstacle. There, there's I, I, a I'm good not going to say that. that there isn't something I can provide. Because I do know various ways to access my, my family's... Uh, headquarters within the well, within the city I, mr bennett i i knew a man of your uh resources and intelligence would have have a solution to every barrier that we come across i this is great energy i i think we could be long-term partners uh, wonderful you 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 too hungry well, we should, let's get some food out here and he kind of slaps again and the android butler comes wandering out with some proper food and we'll take that opportunity to kick over elvis what are you doing on the ship is there anything you want to do as you're you've been listening to all of this like headquarters you know so is there anything El you're interested elvis in doing? elvis turns to wally he's like so wally uh listen well while yeah. we've been chatting and listening and eating some popcorn i've i've drawn up uh, your CI, that's confidential informants uh, okay. form here. See, it's it clearly states I've I've got it backdated in the system that you've been working for us for six backdated. months helping us gather information against Edgar and 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 the Bennett family. And uh, I've I've got it locked here. I've got it. I've got your retinal scan and I've got a, a, a DNA lock to it and it and your signature on it saying that that you're certified to it. And I've uploaded this information um, to the Holland main drive. So I mean. You are locked in as an employee for us for the last six months. So the reason I'm telling you this is because we're partners now of a sort. And the only way that the Bennett's aren't going to kill you for being a for being a snitch is if uh, we get you off planet with us. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm going to let you out of that cell. And I'm going to tell you to go get down on the Gatling gun. Because in a minute, we're going to do what I'm going to I'm going to explain physics to our friend Edgar. You see, this ship multi-ton spaceship capable of re-entry and exiting atmosphere. It's a tank, a flying tank. And we're going to skip it off the second floor of his house. And we're going to bounce this thing through the second floor. It's going to cause a little bit of havoc. I mean, structural damage, the house may be, may be very nice, but it is not going to be able to take up. To, and everybody's going to run out. And then my friends may, may get, yeah, yeah, Wally, what, what is it, Wally? So if I've been like working for you guys for like six months, do I get like yeah. back pay? Absolutely. Based on the amount of money we've taken in over the last six months and our efforts to take down Edgar Bennett, which just started, say, you know, about two hours ago, you'll you'll get a percentage of the profit based on the amount of effort you put forth. So that's really going to depend on how good of a shot you are. And I don't want you to hit anybody. I just want you to hit things around the yard to make it look like we're trying to kill everybody. But no, we don't want to kill anybody because I don't like to kill. It's not it's not how I do business. Yeah, I, I don't like to kill either. No, I mean, I like that's to, good. you know, the fisticuffs, yeah. knuckle sandwiches and such, you know. You and Gwen, you'll get along fantastic because she is all about the, the, the knuckle sandwiches. Personally, I prefer... Not, not to do the fisticuffs if I don't have to. You know what I'm saying? They get in, get out, quiet. But apparently, uh, yeah. what, what looks like we're getting into some sort of murder scheme. And, you know, I, I Nicky, he talks himself into some interesting corners. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to blow this plan sky high. So you get on the Gatling gun. I'm going to fire Gatling up the ship. Gun. And we're, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't it. hit anybody. Just hit around everything. Okay. And he starts you walking can even, away. You can, even, you can even ping it off the rhinestone cowboy there. It's probably not going to do a lot of damage, but... Uh, and then yeah, we'll just see how it goes from there. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay. Can I go to the bathroom first? Well, yeah, yeah. Listen, there's a bottle down there in, 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 the, in the turret next to the Gatling gun. Okay. It's half full, so don't swash it around a little bit. But, you know, just in case. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go on the Gatling gun 
and I'm going to shoot things with it, but not people, just things. Not things, not people, and not the pigs either, because those pigs, I mean, pigs are smart. Yeah, they... Pigs are almost as smart as dogs. You can't shoot no pigs, but shoot okay. around the parking lot, you know, maybe shoot up the cars a little bit. One of them bit me in the ass once, so I mean, I don't mind shooting well, it if you want. You know, if, if you can find that particular pig and you're 100% sure and you want to target that pig, I'm okay with that, okay. but let's not focus our energies on the pig. Got Okay. Remember, your very Don't small focus. percentage of this job is based on how well you do this. Your very so I, small percentage. If I hit the pig, does my percentage go up or does it go down? It stays the same as long as this, this. in hitting the pig, you do the rest of your job, which is just so chaos without killing any of my friends or really anybody else, if at all possible. Okay, yeah, I think I got it. Uh, I understand uh, this sounds like a, a good plan. And I just go down the, to the Gatling gun. Just go down the galley gun, you know. Hey, but you wait. I I'm going to give you the signal. What's the and then signal? When I the signal is, shoot the motherfuckers. Shoot when I say shoot the, the motherfuckers, motherfuckers, you shoot the motherfuckers. Right, but you don't but want me to actually people. shoot the motherfuckers. No, you want no, no. Yeah. To shoot every shoot around, around them. Shoot around. Shoot yeah. around I was them. just trying. Yeah, Wally, I was trying to use your vernacular. Okay, I figured right. that would be something well, you would understand. Why don't you just say, like, shoot around the motherfuckers? <laughs> uh, uh, okay, so all right, Wally. We'll, we'll go shoot around. I'll say shoot around. The motherfuckers. That's when you know it's time to shoot, shoot around, around the motherfuckers. motherfuckers. Got but it. But not the pigs, unless it's the no one pigs. pig. Unless no pigs. Unless it's people. the one pig that bit me in the ass. And don't shoot people. Don't shoot people. Okay. Got it. All right. All right. You can count on me. You can count Elvis on me. goes up and fires up the ship. And he's ready. Okay. He isn't right. bouncing yet, but he's got a plan if, okay. if things go sideways. So well, things are kind of going sideways. As Freddie and Gwen, you just <laughs> you just finished dragging the body into the uh, into this little hut. Uh, there is somebody feeding the pigs outside. Uh, you you do you do notice that there's this console in here uh, inside where this desk is, and there's like a little alarm kind of thing going off. It also seems to have controls like intercom into the uh, into the main house. There's a couple of little camera. You know, it's like a little security hut here and there. What did you What do you two want to do? Uh, first order business is turning the alarm off, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's not hard to do. Uh, it's you just start hitting buttons here and there, and eventually you can see the light. That like like kind of red blinking light goes off. What's oh, the second order of business? Uh, try and go back into the ship or what? Yeah. So make sure this guy is like bound and gagged in here. So he's tied up. He's gagged. Yeah, he's fine. not going anywhere. He's not interrupting our plan. Um. Then yes, going back to the ship. So stealthing so that the guy out by the pigs doesn't see us, so that we can get in the ship. Okay. Uh, go ahead and just reroll a uh, savvy test. Things have changed significantly since then, so why don't we go ahead and do a little savvy test, and we'll see whether or not they can... I'm going to grab an upper hand for this, because I yeah. seem to need there it. Yeah, are a couple from rolls. the audience. Thank you, uh, generous seven. people. Oh, thank God, eight. Okay, I have <laughs> plus one in savvy. For a moment, I thought I had plus one in grit, and I had zero in savvy. But, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got exactly eight. Pass. Uh, both you pass. Okay, so both of you are you're, you're you managed to sneak back over. At, at one point, you can see the guy starts coming back. He's got this, mm -hmm. you know, the the sacks are empty. Whatever was in them, and he like walks back. He kind of looks around for a second, doesn't see anything. You two are kind of hiding behind like one of the struts, one of the landing struts of the ship. You're just kind of waiting, waiting, and then you hear the as the door to the back of the of the Bennett house opens up. And he goes, you hear it kind of close once more, and you know that you're in the clear. You get back up, and I'll say that at this point, um, you're not as, you're not having to actually rush as much. You're trying a second time. We'll say you're able to kind of go through the process, or maybe you even find like a card, you know, an access card or something like that on the guy's body, mm -hmm. and you're able to, to sort of open the door. So door opens, step onto the ship. First thing you notice is that it smells uh, in here like potpourri. It's just like there's this wafted sense of of air freshener everywhere, uh, yeah. and it's this is sort of like musky uh, kind of it's kind of getting up into your nose a little bit to the point where it's almost making your eyes water. It's extraordinarily strong, uh, but you are in what looks like kind of the kind of the side of the ship. Uh, there is a ton. There is a, a hallway that seems to kind of go off towards the towards the bridge, uh, off to the left. The to the right, which kind of take you to what you would imagine are either uh, executive rooms or cargo or something like that, but that's kind of your choice at this point. What would you like to do? 
Um, Gwen's gonna ask Freddy to start trying to input that chip or whatever that Elvis gave us into the mainframe. And okay. Gwen's gonna continue to like stealth around and look to see if she can find that life form that we identified on the ship. Okay. Gwen, you, uh, so you're heading right as you're gonna explore the rest of the ship. Freddy, you're heading mm-hmm. left to go take care on the bridge. Yes. Is that right? Okay. We'll start uh, as Gwen, you start stealth and you peek in. There's a couple of these state rooms here and there. They just look like, they just look like temporary bedrooms. It doesn't look like they're there for, you know, anyone lives here or anything like that, but there are what look to be some decent looking decoration, uh, but nothing that suggests that these are lived in too much. Uh, You're not sure, you know, if he stays in here regularly from what you've heard, he just does like pleasure cruises and they're just gone for a couple days and he's back. Do I hear pigs? Uh, roll an observation check and roll it against the odds as there's a lot of doors between you and the rest of the ship. Okay. Uh, against the odds, fail. Okay. Yeah, you do not hear anything but your your boots on the kind of the metal grating of the hallways that you're okay. walking through. Uh, but you push further deeper into the sort of the back of the back of the ship. Freddy, you go up to the you go up to the the bridge open up the door and you can see that there is this seat uh, right in the middle, right in front of the console. And there's like this viewing screen uh, that seems to not be, it's not particularly large, but there's all sorts of little knob switches here and there. Uh, It's big enough for a hand, maybe about four or five people to stand in here, but you only see like two seats. Uh, Mm -hmm. One of them seems to be tucked under a like a console immediately to your right as you walk in. And the other one is that this large back seat, kind of a ladder back seat. And you see that there is someone in there uh, as they turn around and like you're like you're watching. You see as like the 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 seat just sort of spins and you see there is this there's this Android chauffeur that's just sort of looking at you. Where would you like to go today, Mr. Bennett? And then as its eyes are kind of getting all lit up in some way, you can see, I have a little picture I want to show you, actually. It's pretty fun. Uh, As you see, it's (laughs) these big old, big old, like, goggle eyes suddenly grow, like, red. Alert, 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 alert. As it sounds like it just took, like, a snap of you. What would you like to do there, Freddy? (sighs) Crap. (laughs) Brother, uh, you gotta you gotta access that Android's neural net there and delete the photo it took of you and then reset the security protocols and it should take you about five six minutes. You'll be fine. It, uh, okay, so she uses her knife and attempts to follow instructions from Elvis. Okay, so you you go to step up to it and they try to like break into its panels and it's it's not like lunging out at you, but once you start getting into the panels, you feel like this short circuit just. <laughs> just suddenly come out and uh, and shock you roll a grit test okay i'm gonna continue taking upper hands because i keep rolling because you like to cheat you don't just like to hands. sit here in the in the, in the, <laughs> in the you know on the, on the losing side of things that's fine i have rolled so many ones tonight it's Good. just not even funny um Good. i rolled another one but luckily because it was upper hand it's a nine Okay, so you just your arm just goes and just completely numb. Uh, you, whatever it is your, was in your hand that you're messing with a screwdriver or the card or, or just some little thing that you're prying with drops out of your hand, clanks to the ground, and your whole right arm just goes numb. Uh, but you don't get any burns or anything like that, and so it's probably just a matter of time before you know you get the feeling back. But we'll say just for probably the extent of this scene, uh, one of your arms is completely numb. Meanwhile, inside, Callum, Nikki. Uh, as you're sitting here talking, one, uh, like, you can see that he's got a couple guards near with him still, and one of them kind of does one of these, right? Kind of puts their hand up to their ear and then leans down and whispers something in Edgar's ear. And you can see Edgar's eyes just kind of get really big. And he kind of leans forward. He's like, now, uh, Mr. Fontaine there, uh, I believe you've been uh, holding out on me. Do you didn't come here I alone, would, did you? I would never... <laughs> Why At that point, no, that? I, I came here with Caleb. At that point, uh, Elvis, you hear over the over the comms. Uh, hey, uh, Nikki, there, um, executing Operation Fubar, incoming <laughs> duck. Hits the thrusters on the ship, and aims it at the top floor of the house. 
Okay, so but while that's happening, Callum wants to shoot whatever fire suppression systems there. Okay, so you want to like if you could if you're looking at for like sprinkler systems or something like yeah, that, like on the looking okay. for something like that or something that will make a big splash, something. Okay, let's. Why don't we let's let's do initiative. There's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts, but I think all of this is now gonna happen in sort of structured oh, time. God. Okay. <laughs> oh no. God! So there's a lot. Nikki goes first. It's happening. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, Nikki, you hear Nikki? Like Nikki? Like we're gonna we're gonna roll initiative, and then we'll kind of resolve. Well, but what Nikki always goes first. Okay. Oh, that's. Do you uh, have like a no, unit for that? No, I, I just roll an initiative with upper hand. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. So uh, again, roll a d6 or a d3, I should say, but a d6 divided by two. Uh, add your savvy, and if you have any sort of special gambit like like Nikki has to that affects your initiative, go ahead and take that into account. I am going to split up my folks into a couple different groups. Uh, I don't want to have them all going at the same time, but I'm going to basically have the Bennett crew go. I'm going to have the McGregor crew go, like separately. So I'm gonna have like two different groups, like whoever's with the Bennett's, whoever's with McGregor's, and then you all, and then maybe the pigs. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Wait, what? 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 <laughs> okay. So, uh, all right. Uh, anyone? Anyone rolls? We'll start. Any? Anyone get a five? Yes. Yes. Okay. C- Callum and Elvis got fives. All right. This is cool. This is the old-fashioned way I used to do. It. Anyone roll a four? I rolled a four. Four. Okay. For Freddie. All right, Nikki. Oh, were we supposed to roll as well? Yeah, everyone. Because there's gonna this is gonna be there's gonna be a lot of stuff that's about to everything's shaking loose. Just a D three. Just a D three plus savvy. Yeah. Four. I also got a four. Okay. So Gwen. All right. Well, unsurprisingly, the McGregors (laughs) didn't roll well. So they're gonna go last. However, the Bennett's are on that four run though. But that does mean Callum and Elvis will be able to get some stuff off. All right, so here we go. So Callum and Elvis, you're going to get to go first. And because you're in different locations and you're not dependent on each other, we'll say the two of you resolve. uh, Your actions are going to resolve at the same time. Uh, So uh, Callum, you said you're looking specifically for uh, fire suppression and you just want to pull your gun and fire them and fire at them. Is that right? Well, the the Edgar leans over to start giving his spear. Mm Mm-hmm. And he goes, and he's like, "Now nah, you wouldn't be uh, holding out on me there, Mr. Fontaine. You didn't come here by just the two of you, did you? And so then, Callum, you pull the gun out and you fire up. Uh, go ahead and roll your savvy uh, to to fire the gun. Uh, we'll say as, 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 as long as you as long as you hit eight, you'll hit like one of the sprinklers. But if you get a higher roll, if you go even higher with your roll, we'll say you take out a couple of these sprinklers here and there. Is it with advantage or because a trick shot just normal? Uh, it's, it's be, because of your gambit, I think you get it at, at, at upper hand, right? Cool. Yeah. Upper yeah. Hand. I think you should have it at upper hand. Yeah. Then I have 10. Okay. Two 10. Uh, I'll, we'll say that's eight, nine. So we'll say you take, you take three of the sprinklers out, like right over top of where this sunken living room is the wet bar where the Android was kind of pulling the drinks from and everything. And all of a sudden you can see each of these these guards just are fumbling now with their shotguns. They've had them in their hands, but they haven't really been kind of at attention. But now they're swinging in the in your direction. At the exact same time this is happening, all of a sudden, all of you kind of feel the shaking a little bit of the Earth as a freaking spaceship is now flying at fairly high speeds towards the, the Harlan estate. Elvis, go ahead and roll a savvy test for piloting, and I will roll... I will roll a Gatling gun test for old Walter. That's what I'm going to do. Wally. Wally. What's Shoot that? Shoot around the motherfuckers. But I can't go. When, I can't go when you're talking. One second. Hold on. Hold, yeah, you got to stop peeing. It's time It's time for action now, Wally. Shoot around the motherfuckers. A, but it took focus me a while to ground. find. Wally, what? focus what? on the ground vehicles, and I'll, I'll bump your percentage by 1%. Well, I don't even know where I started. <laughs> 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 You hear him. He's like, you hear, you hear him suddenly say, "Ah, oh, no, man, it's all over me now." Uh, and then you hear the it's sound right. of Just a glass don't tell bottle Gwen. Don't tell Gwen. She gets very upset when people when people throw piss all around the uh, the, the the turret there. Okay. Can, and then kind of t- t- kind of to himself, he says, "He's like, does that happen a lot?" What the? Uh, <laughs> you, uh, go ahead. You would be surprised. 
Can I take one of the audience dice for of course. Uh, Do it. upper hand? All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, that's a twelve in total. Okay, a twelve. It's that's as good as almost as good as can be. As you're you're just looking to kind of clip the top of the. Basically, uh, I'm going to come in right at roof line and just kind of sk- and take the roof off the house. And I mean, okay. obviously, it's going to do significant structural damage to the house. I'm not trying to okay. kill anybody, but he wants to scare the shit out of everyone in the house. Okay, so you 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 sweep it down and like you're you just kind of belly flop at the top now the top of the the top of the building if you recall had like a small pool and like a hot tub and stuff and there was like this kind of little gazebo area so that gazebo is no more (laughs) and all of a sudden there's this crack in the ceiling as the water begins to drip down those of you inside of that house nikki callum it just starts to shake like crazy you see a couple of the windows just start to crack all of the all all the the two guards and edgar are like what the what the hell's going on you're shouting from above freddy you're inside of the uh, uh, of the uh, the bridge of the ship you see just falling off the side of the ship now there is that that uh, kind of purple area uh, the gazebo uh, that was up and it just smashed down to the ground and as you're kind of watching right above it you see the belafonte kind of drifting as it's doing its drive-by uh no, okay I, I hit i hit the external speakers and go yippee ki yay Okay, I will roll now that, for that, good That old means uh, get the hell out, guys. I rolled pretty well for Walter, actually. I rolled a six, five, and a four. Uh, so Walter is. <laughs> and so those of you who are inside, you just see now after the cracks uh, kind of come up, all of a sudden, thump, 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 now the. the like you're starting to see all these little bullet holes suddenly explode along the side of the, the side of the the house and kind of push like the the glass starts to f- fracture and fall. You hear the sounds of uh, Freddie from from where you're at, and even Gwen, I would say, you hear the sounds of ding 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 as some of the ship probably gets hit as well, but not to the point where it's going to harm it. And as you're looking out towards where the security hut is, Freddie, it just gets. <laughs> As he just blows that building up as well, because that's what he's supposed to fire at. Uh, <laughs> we'll move. We'll move then to line four. Uh, Nikki, Freddie, Gwen, and then it's going to be the Bennett crew. Uh, what's a tiebreaker again? Anyone uh, remember? Savvy. If it's between uh, good guys and bad guys, and then GM picks bad guy order, and players pick good guy order. Okay. Uh, Edgar has got a two savvy. Uh, his goons have a one savvy. And they're kind of on the same level. Uh, so what do what does Nikki have inside? Too savvy. All right, uh, Nikki, you can go ahead and go, man. You, you get the you get the first gig before Edgar or these goons go. Uh, so we're <laughs> on like the second floor, that. right? Uh, no, you're on the first floor. The McGregor uh, guy, he went upstairs with Gale to the second floor. Oh, good, screw him. Uh, <laughs> but like our wind, the windows are being blown out and stuff. I want to jump out a window and just start booking it. You just start. You just want to run. Absolutely. I, uh, I have no gun. I'm not going to okay. be any use in a fight right there. Okay. Uh, leaving Callum behind is the only target. Uh, <laughs> Nikki, you go running. Uh, you jump out through like this fractured, this fractured uh, uh, glass window. It's already. It's not fully fallen, but because it's got so many fractures in it, you just burst through it. I tell you what. Uh, roll a. Uh, let's do a grit test to see if you just happen to get any scratches along the way. Uh, that is a ten. Okay, you do not like you're you've you've got your full suit on. It's just kind of covering everything. You kind of cover your head a little bit as you jump through. You're you're coated in little shards of glass as you hop out. Uh, you're on like the side of the house. Uh, you can see over towards where that domed greenhouse is, where the pigs stay, and they are freaking the hell out. You also notice that there's a there's quite a few bullet holes in that green that that greenhouse as well, and the pigs are kind of like smashing up against it. And you know it's probably just a matter of time before these pigs break loose but you are outside of the building however that does mean that bennett and these two goons that are inside uh really only have the one target but i will say one of the goons one of bennett's goons is going to chase after you uh they do have shotguns by the way uh so i am going to let him take a shot at nikki but it'll be i'm gonna give him I'm going to give him um, against the odds as it's a little bit further Nikki than he probably is yelling. I'm on arm. <laughs> uh, okay. So, uh, okay. I got a against the odds. So I'm rolling four. Oh my God. What a terrible roll. Five, one, one, one. 
so that is going to be a miss no matter what I do. But the guy runs, and he's standing now in the middle of the frame of the window. He's a good 20 feet or so from you, Nikki, as you were just booking it. And he, he holds up the gun. He's like, get your ass back here, Fontaine. And he fires. And you see right next to you, like, the, the, the dirt just explodes where, where it hit. Uh, inside. It's not uh, the first time someone's tried to shoot me in the back as I'm running away. Oh, for sure. Um, and don't forget, like Mark's mentioned it in chat, you can spend your heart to make me re-roll uh, as well. So if I roll really well, you can always burn your one heart to not take a ton of damage. But I rolled crap there. Oh, I was meant so you could hit Nikki. <laughs> 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 Stephen would do that, actually. I feel like Stephen would do something like that. Oh, come on. <laughs> so, uh, Callum, you watch as uh, the... Uh, I, I actually probably did this in the wrong order. It should have been it should have been Edgar who would have technically gone first as he has too savvy, but I'll let it work in this order. You can see how... Remember, he, he's kind of got right next to him this, like, this fancy cane. You kind of heard he has this cane, and he stands up, and with a greater quickness than you would have probably given him credit for... He just pulls on the cane, and it pulls out this little kind of fencing foil, this sword that comes out, and he just lunges right after you, Callum, as you're, you're kind of still half standing, half sitting. Like, you kind of got up, started firing, and you're still finishing the firing as he lunges forward. Uh, and so this is going to be, again, this is, I'm not going to give him, this is going to be normal, so not going to be against the odds. Uh, the four and the five. All right. Uh, so the four and the five will make it hit two points of damage uh, as he lunges and he kind of cuts you along the side. How's that do for you, Callum? Can I dodge? No. Uh, no. Uh, but you can, if you wanted to have me reroll something, you could spend one heart to see if I can reroll one of the other die. Uh, but it's only two ah, points. I'll take the two. Okay, yeah. so you take the two. He just lunges for it, and you just feel like in your thigh, just the point of his sword cane just stabs right into you. Um, Ask him if he's trying to compensate for something. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that his face now has no longer got that smooth, uh, nothing really phases him as he looks like part angry, part in shock as his house is now falling apart in front around him the walls are shaking the ceiling's kind of cracking drips of the water from the pool are starting to already sip through not just the not just from ceiling to second floor but from second floor down to first floor so who the hell knows what the hell's going on up with the mcgregors uh then i'm gonna say the other goon will take a shot at you um with his oh dear okay uh the other one will take a shot at you uh, again, I got another two points of damage. That's a six and a two, so that'll hit. And then new- this not be by uh, 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 what you call it, against the odds because of the uh, sprinkles. Yeah, you know what? That's actually fair. Uh, I'll roll another one. Being yeah, because it's a, it's a little bit the the water's coming down, everything's coming down. Yeah, I think that's fair. I roll another two, six two two two. Uh, drop the highest, so I got a bunch of twos. So maybe he's just afraid. He's like. Uh, the water's coming down, kind of kind of making his hands a little slick, plus his boss just like lunged at you and stabbed you. And so he kind of pulls the shot off to the side a bit, and you see the table, uh, that coffee table, that beautiful kind of marble coffee table just <laughs> kind of erupts uh, as you manage to dodge out of the way of it. Um, then we're going to go to three. Uh, so tier three, we're gonna, that's where we're putting the, the McGregor and the pigs. Uh, I think Freddie had a four. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Freddie. Yep, you're absolutely well, right. Sorry. Both of you did. There you go. Sorry, I'm used to having them, the foundry do it myself. Okay, Freddie, Gwen. So, Gwen, you are inside the uh, you're inside the actual ship, the, the rhinestone the cowboy. Right you mm-hmm. went to the right. You you now hear stuff, but you don't hear pigs. You hear gunfire, <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> uh, what would you like to do? Um... At that, she's gonna give up looking, and she's gonna head up to the front to see how Freddie's doing, because that she she knows that means get get out. <laughs> okay, so you you run up and you see Freddie. Oh, that reminds me actually. The chauffeur actually has a. Okay. The chauffeur actually would get the O two. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay, so uh, Gwen. You run up, you see Freddie's kind of holding her arm. She's leaning and looking out like the window. And as you look out the front, the front viewing port, you see the gazebo from up top is on the ground smashed. You see that little security hut has got a thousand bullet holes in it. And the wall is kind of 
collapsing right as you step into the bridge, and it just and crashes down to the ground. Uh, so that's yours, Gwen, as you run up just to check in on her. Uh, Freddy, what are you doing? Uh, can I try again with my other hand to try to uh, this, uh, take this? Yes. Uh, going uh-huh. to be against the odds, though, as you're doing it with one arm, as your arm is, is going to be numb for the rest of this scene. Uh, go ahead and roll against the odds, but uh, savvy right. test. I would like to take one of those upper hands so that I'm doing it straight. Cancel it off. Yep, sure. Yeah. So that's two with savvy is a plus two. Oh my gosh. I am so sick of rolling ones. <laughs> that's a six. It's a six. Okay. Uh, do you want to spend heart or anything to re-roll? Oh, it's going to put me down to four heart. Uh, but sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, that's better. That's a six. All okay. Right, so now it's a 12. All right. Good news, bad news situation for you. Good news. You managed to wrench free like, and, and sort of disable the android, and all of a sudden it gets... But right as you do, some sort of automated emergency system kicks in, and this bulkhead comes up right behind you on the bridge. And all of a sudden you hear a... Ch- and you look up at these little vents. These uh, these little vents are starting to push something into the room itself, and it smells a lot like that really stank, musky potpourri uh, that you smelled when you first came on. And both you and Gwen are starting to get a little, a little woozy <laughs> oh, no. here. Oh goodness! Butterflies. Hey, hey, Freddy, did did you just did you just trip the second day security measures? That's that's not good. That's not good, Freddy. You're so helpful after the fact. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we're going to go to McGregor, the pigs, and the chauffeur, who's now disabled, so the chauffeur is gone. Uh, McGregor's, uh, you, uh, I'll say, Nikki, from outside, you can see to the second floor. Remember, there's that big old wraparound balcony. They're like out on the balcony. The balcony is like hanging and falling, and the, the Brendan guy is like, ah! Ah, as his hand is like not is like the the maimed hand that 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 Freddy shot back in the day. It's just kind of ah, Gale is up there trying to pull him up. Ah, ah. One of the guards is is there, kind of like get out of the way, get out of the way. As he's trying to aim down and shoot at you. Uh, I'm going to give him. Um, I'm gonna give him against the odds uh, to try to fire down with his revolver. Uh, sorry, I got to roll four. I drop the five. Okay, he clips you, actually. I rolled a nine. Take one point of damage as you feel a little graze on your on your on your beautiful red laser suit. They ruined it. Just, just, oh. it's just a sting. It's red so they can't see me bleed. <laughs> However, that's not the really scary thing. The really scary thing is as you're you hear thunk, thunk, as you sat here, I can't do a pig sound. Uh, you see these pigs just suddenly ramming their heads against a the glass starts to crack even more from where the bullet holes went through and all of a sudden this sheet of glass just collapses and now these pigs are free uh and that's the end of this first round we'll go back to the top callum and elvis uh let's see uh callum you're in immediate danger <laughs> you've got a guy stabbing you with the with a foil with a sword cane you've got another guy with a with a gun with a gun pointed at you Tell him, nope. stop screwing around in there. Get get Edgar and get out of here. Right. So there's two of them. Edgar right in front of me. Other dude yeah. off to the side. Yeah. So I want to put Edgar in between me and the other guy and shoot Edgar in the arm. So I don't. Okay, so Edgar's going to be between you, so you're going to maneuver. You're going to step on top of the broken the, the broken coffee table now, kind of spin him around. You want to shoot him in the arm and make sure that he's kind of giving you cover. Absolutely. Uh, let's say uh, uh, Savvy, I think, since you're shooting and you're moving. Let's do a Savvy. Um, and I would say because, uh, because the other guy got uh, against the odds for the rain coming down, it's probably only fair that maybe you get it too as the rain's coming down or, or the, the water's coming down now. In that case, it is an eight. Okay, an eight is still a success. Uh, so, what is the last die? Yes, thank you. Well, um, the uh, oh, the third one is um, a five. Okay, so okay, so then you do five. Okay, you deal five points of damage to Edgar. Uh, okay, not enough to take him out completely. Uh, however, 
<laughs> you shoot him in the arm. Uh, I assume his sword arm, right? Yeah. Okay, so as he recoil, he kind of pulls the sword back. There's a bit of your blood in the, on the end of it. You step off to the side. You kind of spin him as he's attempting to, to stab back at you. And that's when you just hold the gun, like, right underneath, like, where his tricep is and just fire upward. And you can see the just the skin and the blood just burst. As his arm uh, suddenly kind of goes limp and noodly uh, in the... Uh, Helm has form. <laughs> and, the, and the cane falls to the ground. Okay. Uh, excellent. Um, he is still he is still technically up though. That hurt though. Uh, then Elvis. Elvis, <laughs> a... Nikki, grab one of the struts. I'm coming in low, and, and I will I will I will pop the afterburners. Come in low enough that that Nikki can grab onto one of the landing struts of the Belafonte. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a quick hop and pop. And then pop back up and, and, and basically jump over to uh, uh, to the rhinestone cowboy. And I'm screaming out, Wally, go ahead, Dad. Wally, uh, go ahead and shoot the pigs. Go ahead and shoot all the pigs at this point, Wally. The, pi- the pigs are your target now, Wally. The They're dog, very the aggressive. Pigs. They're much more aggressive than I was anticipating. I was yeah. expecting Porky, but no, these are not these are not Porky. Shoot the pigs. Do I, does my percentage go up? Your percentage? Will definitely go up based on the amount of bacon you put on the ground there. That's a yes. That is a yes, Wally. <laughs> that is absolutely okay. a yes. So you're you're you kind of do this this drive by initially. You kind of whip around. The spaceship comes back. You are the Belafonte, and you you're trying to get into such a position that Nikki can grab onto one of the the struts that are coming down. Is that yeah. right? So basically, okay, well, are you yeah. going to get run over by the Belafonte here? <laughs> oh, yeah, is that yeah. what's happening? <laughs> if, if I screw up this roll, you're going to get crushed. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll. Yeah, go ahead and roll. This sounds this sounds fairly difficult. I'm going to say against the odds. Against the odds, but there are you have resources to help with that. Yeah, we have audience left. If you'd like to even. Okay, them out. I'll take yeah. I'll take one to even it out. Yeah. All right, Nikki. I, Nikki, I love you, buddy, but uh, this this could hurt. This could hurt a little bit. <laughs> Oh god! I got a six and a four. Okay, so that's a ten. You, you manage to turn the Belafonte around almost on a dime. You bring it back. You take, you take it kind of low. It's not obviously the the landing pad's taken up by the the rhinestone, but there you are. Landing struts are coming down. Nikki, it's within potential reach of you, uh, but Elvis has done his job. And then I will roll for Walter here as he's trying to shoot some pigs. Let's see how he does. Okay, okay, six and a two is an eight. Three points of damage. Uh, so, Nikki, you watch as the pigs just burst out from the glass of this greenhouse, and they're looking around, they're looking around, and they see you. And then one of them starts, move, like, almost like a bull moving its, uh, moving its, it's like one of its hooves in the ground, just digging the dirt, and starts to run after. And all of a sudden, on the ground, <laughs> as these little specks of dirt start flying up as in a, in a, in a, in a, in a straight line until the pig thum, 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 takes a few and just falls over. Uh, and one of them has been taken out. All right, so we're down to, was it? I think we're down to five pigs. Okay. So that was Callum and Elvis. Now we're moved to Nikki. Uh, Nikki, I think you're next. Uh, Nikki, you are in, <laughs> you're getting shot at from, this, from the second balcony. You're getting shot at from the first floor side of the house where the window has been crashed open. There are pigs that are coming at you, but one of them just got shot. And you look overhead as the Belafonte is slowly coming down. The landing struts are there. You hear Elvis calling out to you. Uh, but Callum, Callum's also still in the house. And you haven't seen Fred yeah, and Fred that, in a that while. That was my worry. What do you like to do? Uh, how? Like, where am I in the layout of this compound? Like okay. what buildings are closest to me? Where's the rhinestone? That kind of thing. I would say it's, I would say you're probably halfway between the uh, the actual greenhouse with the pigs and the actual home and the, the house itself. Like as you came out, we'll call it like the you know the, the western side, right? And so you're kind of halfway between the two of them. Uh, you are probably further away from the landing pad than those other two places. So the rhinestone is probably a little further away from you, and in between yourself and where the rhinestone is, you can see. Here comes the Belafonte kind of lowering itself into this hover position. Uh, Elvis, I think I'd be more use on the ground. Uh, So I'm not going to try to jump on the Belafonte. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's all right, I'm going to I'm going to get on the comms. <laughs> Keep it going. Pick up Caleb. Uh and I'm going to start booking it towards the rhinestone to try and get them. Okay, so you're just going to run, kind of duck underneath as the ship's coming down and you just run underneath, dodge through yeah, the struts you and said- you're running towards the rhinestone. You said there was a security outpost too, right? Like a- yes, on the opposite side of the landing landing pad. And as you start getting close to the landing pad where the rhinestone is, you see that it has suffered some damage, perhaps uh, from the uh, from the Belafonte coming overhead, as one of the walls has already fallen and collapsed into the ground. Another one's kind of collapsed, and you see sort of like that scene from Jurassic Park where all the walls start falling down, and you see there, right in the middle, there is this tied up gag guy. Is- scared to death because everything's falling apart around him okay yeah yeah i'll keep booking it that direction then okay so you're running uh okay then we'll go uh freddie and gwen both of you need to make grit tests uh for me first uh before we see whether or not you get to take your turn Uh, as the the gas is becoming overwhelming do we have any stuff left we have three left yeah can i have gwen No, don't give it to her. Let her get just shoot her in the head. No. That's what I rolled and I didn't call it and I failed. Because I rolled another one. Okay. Uh, Gwen, you're feeling yourself getting a little dizzy, but maybe it's because, you know, Freddie is a little weak from her arm going numb. But Freddie, you turn around. You see, you, you see, like everything kind of starting to shift and move. You say something absolutely ridiculous, something maybe from your memory or your past, whatever. What does Freddie say before she face plants onto the ground, onto the floor of this very tight bridge? The eggs should always be runny. <laughs> and down you go. Why, why are you That's talking so about good. eggs? That's really good. As, uh, yeah. Am I able to do anything or no? Oh, no, you can take your turn. Yeah, you're fine. Um, I want to try and get the door open. Okay. So do you have any any kind of equipment or anything on you? Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> any, okay. Uh, do you have any, uh, so you have no, you have no equipment. Uh, w- does Gwen have any like lock picking knowledge or anything like that? Um, like, not not Bare so much bones. lock picking like not like is an this something like Gwen would really know how to do? Um, a little bit because she's been living like running and probably okay. having to steal to get by. Okay, so then anything you attempt is going to be against the odds. Um, okay. Okay, and I'm going to say there's multiple. We're going to say that there's actually three instances of it against the odds. So right now this would be an impossible task. So you do okay. need to get something else just to be able to roll it. So you would have to burn something just to be able to roll it. This is no longer just a normal door. This is a security like bulkhead, a bulkhead that just kind of okay. came down. Um. Then maybe she won't do that. Then maybe she'll just try and like get her shirt off and try and cover her face so she's not breathing as much of it in. Ashley, family stream, come on. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, that's totally fine. If you want to, like, kind of rip off a piece of cloth, cover your breath, that'll, we'll, we'll say that'll probably buy you around next, you know, something next round so you're not having to, having to roll yeah. through it again because it's still and filling she's, up near. Yeah, and she's, like, yelling to, like, mm. on comms, like, it's, I don't know what it is, but it could be poison or gas. I don't know. Uh, Freddy, Freddy passed out. Hey, there, Gwen. Uh, it's, it's that's no problem. That's no. Listen, just go to the control panel. Uh, get into the ventilation system. You're gonna have to bypass the security protocols there. Reverse the the ventilation system so it sucks everything out. Now the oxygen is gonna go with it, so you're not gonna have a lot of time. But once you, everything cools out, dislocate the ventilation system, blow a hole in the cockpit, and uh, you're gonna have fresh air. Now, they, sure, the ship's not gonna fly after that, but yeah, that's, that's perfectly all right. You're gonna be just fine. Uh, hey, hey, Wally. We're, you definitely have a place on this crew because we're losing two in that ship right there. I mean, like two, two, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. At the, oh shit! Sorry about that, Gwen. No, you'll be fine. <laughs> Is the was the cockpit uh, or the cockpit also blocked off? You're in the co- like the cockpit bridge is the same thing. So it's it's Got basically it, okay. there's remember there's the two seats. One of them actually had a built-in Android chauffeur. And then there was a second seat up here that's tucked underneath the console. There's this whole spread as all sorts of knobs and switches. Like you're in a you're in a spaceship, right? With all okay. of these different things that has to be done. But there is like a, a normal kind of control console. And then there's like 
what looks to be like the the chauffeur was kind of attached in this weird kind of autopilot sort of way. It's not uncommon. These things happen. Android yeah. chauffeurs are a lot of these. Uh, but in a spaceship, is a little... I thought I was blocked off from that, so that's why I was trying mm. to leave this you. This is where it. you're at. That's Could you I instead at. then um, make a roll to try and finish what Gwen, uh, what Freddie was supposed to do with the no, Freddie, thing? Freddie, Freddie basically disabled the Android chauffeur, and so they're no longer... Like kind of no, I meant by applying the um the thing that Elvis gave us to like reset the ship. Okay, yeah. Uh, so it's still gonna call. I'm still gonna make this a savvy test. Uh, okay. Go ahead and roll savvy. I'll say because Elvis is in your ear and because he gave you an item, uh, you can go ahead and and roll this at upper hand. Okay. Nine pass. Uh, eight. Okay. So you go ahead. You find you're, you're you're looking around, looking around, looking for any sort of input input drive, input drive, input drive, anything at all, and you you find a couple. And you're like, oh, which I don't know which one it goes in, and then you just and she just picks one. You just pick one, and you're just, <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden the lights just go down uh, on the consoles here, and everything shuts off. Uh, you still you hear like the the gas continuing to seep in. But after a couple seconds, it sounds like the rest of the ship is starting to shut down. And then suddenly it becomes this tiny little trickle. And there's still gas in the room. Uh, mm -hmm. But nonetheless, it's no longer continuing to fill the room. Okay, so that's Freddy's turn. Um, Freddy in, excuse me, uh, Gwen's turn. Freddy went, Nick, Nikki went. It's now the Bennett's turn. Uh, the <laughs> Edgar just got shot in the arm. Oh, boy. Uh, what is Edgar? What a, and his short cane's gone. Um, okay. Edgar's gonna. Edgar's gonna do. Edgar's gonna run. Edgar's Edgar's gonna bolt away. Um, he's gonna try to. I knew to, he was a smart man. He's going to try to essentially muscle his way past Callum. Um, arm bleeding, sword cane on the ground. He's got guards to take care of you. He's going to make a run for his panic room. I think is what's going to happen here. Uh, or somewhere else, maybe. Um, I'm going to roll a check to see if I can do it, uh, as this is not the easiest thing for him to do, as you have already kind of muscled him through. He's not the strongest of guys in the world, however. I didn't roll well, though. That's a 10. So, Callum, what you shot him in the What's that? Yeah, I'll say go ahead and roll. Uh, let's, roll let's roll contested. Roll your no, no, no. Roll muscle. If I spend it, no, I'll spend the. Oh, you want to re-roll? Yeah, yeah. To... Okay. Depends. Depends what the two dice are. Uh, uh, six and a four. Okay, yeah. So re-roll the six. Nice. Re-roll the six. Okay, so you're spending your heart. Yeah. I rolled a five though. Oh. So it's Can a, I it's... spend a heart to make him re-roll the four? Uh, it's a great. I don't know how. It you works. know what? Go ahead. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I can just Jeff's lie like, about what I I'm roll just anyway. I rolled another heart. four. I swear to God. I really, <laughs> I really rolled another four. Cheat at RPGs. Melissa <laughs> cheats at board games. It's all big. That's true. Uh, I did end up rolling a nine, and it, he does push past Callum, and he starts running uh, towards kind of the kitchen area. Uh, I would say, Callum, you remember from out front that there was like a – kind of a, an area where there are these bikes that were set up. If you remember, there are those kind of very colorful ground bikes. And it looks like he might be running and trying to get out like a, you know, like either like a garage exit or something like that towards those bikes. It seems to be where he's running to. Uh, however, Elvis, he's on his way out. Okay. Uh, and that would be kind of the north side of the building, whereas Nikki went out the west and is kind of running now towards the south side. Uh, and then I'm going to have the other ben then the Bennett goons are going to go. Uh, one of them is going to go chasing after Nikki uh, still, who is dodging and weaving. He's going to take another shot at Nikki, but he's going to have against the odds is there's now a Belafonte above him that's weaving around and he's dodging from the struts here and there. Uh, so uh, drop that four. That was the best. So the best I could do is a five. That'll be a fail. As he goes to fire and it hits one of the struts of the Belafonte, you hear their behind you, Nikki, despite the ridiculously loud sounds of the engine of the Belafonte above you. Uh, the other one inside uh, with Callum, uh, now, the, the again, the, the water is still pouring down from the fire suppression system, cracks in the ceiling now as the water is coming down in another way. Uh, and it looks like the ceiling is going to go pretty soon, Callum. Um, 
he's going to take a shot at you nonetheless. Uh, and then he's kind of like backing away sort of towards like kind of covering his boss's escape, but he's going to fire as he's doing so. I'm going to roll it against the odds. Uh, ooh, that's better. Uh, the six was the highest. I got two fours and I got a two. So the fours make it a success as an eight, and I would be doing two damage as I shoot and back. How you doing, man? <laughs> Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. All right. Uh -oh. But it doesn't seem like he's he's not closing in on you. He's backing away from you. And he's like, he's he's covering oh, I'm his I'm going to shoot the ceiling out from under. Oh, okay. Um, it is your turn. Is it your turn? Where do I, where do I not have Oh, it? it's the... the uh, oh, yeah, you're McGregor's. five. You're... Okay. So then the McGregor's and the pigs will go next. Uh, okay. I'm just going to see if Brendan falls. Uh <laughs> Five, two, and a one. So that's a seven. Brendan goes falling down from the second floor, lands on that maimed foot where Freddie shot him, and just goes Rah! screaming out, lays down to the ground. Gail is up there, and she's like, "Oh, Brendan, are you okay?" That's what she sounds like. Uh, and then the guy who's up top on the second floor actually doesn't have a shot at Nikki because because he's at the second floor and because the Belafonte is down. There's no way he can get that shot, so he will try to instead work his way down in a careful manner. Uh, but he will not get a shot at Nikki. The pigs, on the other hand, um, you know what? You know what? Callum, high or low? Just high or low? I'm saying high. Okay. Hi. <laughs> okay. You see two of these pigs just break out into a full sprint. <laughs> dirt getting kicked up behind them and they just charge as as you see uh, as you look out the window you hear them squealing and you hear the sounds of Brendan also squealing and then those sounds converge as Brendan's trying to get up with his busted leg now and these pigs just tackle him down to the ground um, yeah they we're do gonna, we're gonna couldn't that happen to a nicer person uh, and I'll say that the other pigs one, uh, a couple of them will say Okay, we'll say two of them start running kind of off in a different direction, just getting the hell out. And then one of them is going to start charging at Nikki, but Nikki has put enough distance that he's not going to get attacked this turn. But Nikki, you look over your shoulder, and there is this, this pig just sort of screaming underneath and beneath like the like the the fuel the fuel you know uh, uh, kind of shimmer of the of the Belafonte. You just see this pig just barreling down directly on you. Uh, top of the round, then Callum, Elvis, Callum. They're they're backing away. The guy still has a shotgun trained on you, but they're backing out of the fight. Uh, Elvis, you're you're hovering right where you want to hover. However, Nikki kind of waved you off. You so, do. does Elvis see um, Edgar running out of the building and heading towards the bikes? Hasn't actually got out yet. He would have only okay. been able to kind of get to the, the the garage, but you would but you would have heard it from Callum that he's trying to escape uh, and. The there's a back there's kind of this back entrance and then there's the the front main entrance and then this little garage side towards the front as well. So you're on the wrong side of the of the house basically. But if you were so, to just go up though, you, that's you that's what that's what Elvis is going to do. He flies up. Okay. Um, and then he goes, "Hi, right, Wally. New target once again. We're bumping you here by two percentage points. If two percent, you can two percent." Two percent on top of everything else you've already got, because the pigs thing was fantastic. I, sh I shot dish. one. I know it was fantastic. I loved everything. I mean, bacon for days. Am I not wrong? Am I not? It really smells Listen. in here, by the way. But it's because you pissed all over the place. You gotta, you gotta control well, yourself. It was half Listen. full, so someone else did it too. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand. But Listen, like I said, it's gonna be fine here. Two more percentage points on top of everything else you got if you blow up the garage. All right. Blow up the garage. Blow up the garage. Fire in the garage. Fire in the garage. Elvis is going to float up so that he's got a clean shot at the garage. And then on that on the speakers, he's going to wait until Edgar comes out. And he's going to say, uh, Edgar, there, listen, we can take you in alive, which is how I would prefer things. Or, or Wally here, our good friend Wally, is going to shoot you with the Gatling laser. Because all I really need is a retinal pattern. So I need one eyeball. That's all I need. So... He's going to say that after Edgar pops out. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll hold that to Edgar's turn, uh, but we'll, we'll say we'll, we'll delay that for a second. 
Uh, Elvis. Oh, that was Elvis. So, Callum, what would what are you doing? Uh, if Callum was to shoot the ceiling above these buggers, would the ceiling come down? You might be able to get it on top of the shotgun guy. You're pretty sure Edgar, since he just spent his whole turn running. Yeah, yeah. No, but the shotgun guy, but that's good. Yeah. Shotgun guy, you probably could bring it down on him. Um, I'll yeah. say uh, to do so, I'm going to make it against the odds just to get it to fall down perfectly okay. on top of Can't him. Can't be against the odds, but... Oh, that's right, because you're a thing, so it would be normal. Yeah. Okay, so normal. it would be normal for you. And we do have audience dice, uh, audience help left, too. And that win. is 8 plus 2, so 10. So you fire up... <sighs> When you see this chunk of the ceiling just comes directly down, the guy's backing up. You don't want any of this, man. You don't want... <clears throat> right on the back of his head. And he's like, you don't want any of this. And he <laughs> flops down onto the ground. Bloody pal. Right, His head face planting into the kitchen. Water coming down still. Uh, and it actually is coming down in something of a deluge now that you put a hole in the ceiling. Uh, okay. Um, would you start moving in any direction? You can kind of get, get a little bit of movement and everything, too. After the girl, I would say. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna charge after you're gonna go into the garage. Right, it, yeah. You would you would have you're on comms though. You would have heard that Elvis did give the order to to Walter. To okay, then no, the I wouldn't be. I'd be okay. going. I'd be going the opposite direction. Okay, so you'll head me. out the window where Nikki was. Perfect. <laughs> As you run out, avoiding Kevin, pigs. You look over to your left and you see Brendan on the ground, just getting bitten and attacked and just 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 destroyed by these two giant bloodthirsty pigs that edgar has been training as he's just like kill him, kill him, kill him. As he's reaching so, his hand so they out. can't hear you i'll pay you i'll pay you anything just get the fucking I, i'll tell your friends you, you said you loved them Bye. just get, come on we'll be square we'll be square There's no point in shooting them the pigs are coming after me <laughs> you waste of a bullet <laughs> Okay, uh, so then tier four, uh, as we're gonna, so this we'll say at this point now, uh, Freddie, you're still kind of, you can roll another, you can roll the, uh, a, another grit test, but roll it against the odds to see if you can kind of come to. Uh, Gwen, you also have your turn. Um, and then it's the Bennett's, uh, the Bennett that's outside. There's one Bennett outside that's been ch- chasing Nikki. Uh, there's one Bennett that had been backtracking with Edgar that just got taken out by the fallen ceiling. Uh, so, and then there's Nikki. And so I think Nikki goes first. So Nikki, what do you want to do? I want to get on the rhinestone cowboy. Okay. The door is open. Um, the security bulkhead door, uh, went up onto the bridge. Uh, so you start running up and like it, it is, it is. Kind of, you can see that someone's messed around uh, with the locks. You go inside, you just hear this. Oh God, the smell! Oh, it's just, it's just absolutely awful in here. Um, but it's not as completely horribly omnipresent as it is on the bridge. Would uh, uh would you, yeah. Would I be able to roll a savvy to like guess what that smell is? Sure, go ahead. Uh, that is a ten. Uh, it is most certainly some sort of uh, some sort of like sleeping gas. It's there to not. It's a knockout gas for sure. Whether it's for people or pigs, who know? Maybe both. Uh, but it is a knockout gas, and there is a horrible stench of it throughout the entire ship. So I'm being chased by a pig already. So as soon as yes. I get on the ship, I'd and like the guy to with a shotgun, the door. I'm okay. more worried about the pig. But yeah, <laughs> I've been shot at before. I've never been eaten. Okay. So uh, <laughs> and also. When when I close the door, would there be like an emergency like mask or something in case the ship like depressurized? W- would there be anything like that I could start looking around for? Observation check. That'll Savvy. Be flat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just straight two d six. Straight two d six. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, nine. You do actually see there is a there is a cabinet uh, right inside the door. There's all sorts of these emergency things. You pull it open, and there is in fact a little oxygen tank. It's a little breather. You kind of hold it up to your to your mouth, and that's that's all it is. It's not a full on vac suit or anything like that, but it is a breather with a with an oxygen tank. So you can put right. it over. So over your however mouth. much I can do in my turn, that that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get on the ship, shut the door behind me, and get. So you can shut the door inside. behind you. I'll say you could. That's that's fine. You just with your elbow kind of hit the hit, you know slam your elbow against the, the close button pull open the cabinet start breathing okay awesome uh, all right so then the okay 
The guy that, uh, so then Gwen and Freddy, how are you two doing? I need, uh, so Freddy, Freddy I need your- passed the grit. Okay, you test. slowly start coming to, you feel, your arms are still very numb, uh, but they're slowly starting to come back. Your face is really the painful part, uh, is you feel like your your tooth might be loose, your nose is kind of squirted off to the side as you face planted something something fierce. Um, and you can kind of taste a little bit of iron, the blood in your mouth a bit, uh, as you start getting back up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mark's getting attacked. <laughs> uh, okay, so you uh, you come to Freddy, but you can take your turn. Uh, you're a little bit woozy, so we'll say anything you do on this turn is going to be against the odds. Gwen, uh, you're also free to do something as well, because you never had an issue. So what do two of you do up in the bridge? Uh, Gwen's going to try and see if there's a way to deactivate this blockhead that dropped down on the console. Okay. Uh, you did do the whole like reset thing. You just know it's not yeah. instantaneous. It's like a whole reboot process. It'll probably take a minute or something to do that. Uh, I'll tell you what, roll a savvy test. See if you can figure out some kind of way to counteract this emergency security protocol. And I'll say it'll probably have to be against the odds, though. You're not familiar with this ship. Okay. So let me roll another one. It is a is little, there any way that I can try to help her with this? Six, seven, eight. Uh, unnecessary. She was successful, so you can do something else. Uh, Gwen, you start kind of just at a certain point, you're just like, ah, ah, smashing buttons. You just start smashing buttons left and right. <laughs> That's the Gwen specialty, yeah. apparently. <laughs> you see, like, like those anyone who's outside, you see, like, the lights, like, these floodlights come on, go off, go on, go off, go on. The intercom like, pops on. You yeah. hear Gwen going, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Disappear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A small little a small little screen off to the side comes on. You see this like black and white CCTV of what looks like the cargo hold, and there's a bunch of cages, and there's all these all these little baby pigs in them squealing around there as well, and then goes back off, and then uh, and then finally you hit again, and security bulkhead door comes back down. Uh, uh, Freddy, it would be Freddy's turn now. Yeah. Well, no. Do you have something, Gwen? Go ahead. Just all it would be is like uh, Gwen would just take a big deep breath as like normal air starts to come towards us and and she checks on Freddy. Oh god. Back. I'm back. Oh let's go, let's go, let's go. Freddy's so. whole face looks like it's been pushed slightly off to her left. Her nose just looks I'm not sure if it's broken, but definitely something's up there. Her eyes kinda you know it's got a little little blood kind of tinkering down from it. She fell pretty hard. She couldn't brace her fall because her arms were numb. So she yeah. just pushed yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Fred, can you pilot the ship? Uh should we leave? You're, you have you have noodle arms right now. <laughs> <laughs> the no. one's just talking. She didn't realize both of them were so noodly. <laughs> No, but my my uh my legs work, so I can run. So uh, now that if the you do start leaving, open. you will very quickly see there's Nikki just come inside. He's got this he's got this oxygen mask on his face, and so the three of you can now you're within talking distance, sight of each other. You're within ten feet of each other, or so. What you the don't hell is go going out on out there? Pigs. Okay, uh, can you pilot the ship? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. So we gotta, we gotta plan. Okay, okay. I can go pilot. I got, well, we got this. Okay. So then, uh, the Bennett guy is was was chasing Nikki. Uh, you can hear him outside, uh, and you, I would say, you hear him kind of banging. You hear him kind of banging, banging, and all of a sudden, you, you just hear this scream. <laughs> And then a shot fired as outside the pig, because it couldn't get to you, Nikki, smashes onto him. And the two of them are fighting on the ramp onto the rhinestone cowboy. Um, Edgar Bennett, who is now defenseless, uh, is you see the garage door open up, Elvis, uh, as you're kind of kind of looking down. You see like this uh, this sort of light show up where it looks like it's it's not so much you can see it, but you can just see the, the sort of the light of the inside of the garage suddenly f- kind of flush out into the middle of the ground. A shadow of a man kind of holding his arm and running and running. And he seems to be running towards those ground vehicles. Um, you want That's Wally when Wally opens fire up on those ground vehicles. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to give anyone to give Wally a... A uh, what was it one of those called an audience die for for upper hand? Anybody? Anybody? Do we, uh, do, do we have any? Do we have any? <laughs> two left. It should be two left. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give, give him one. one. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Uh, all right. I dropped the two, so that's gonna be. Oh man. 
That's going to be a five and a three, which will hit. So that's the eight, and he does six points of damage. <gasps> wow. So, he, so Alvis, as you're looking at the shadow, moving, 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 and then suddenly you can see him come out. He's got that suit on. His arms kind of is, is dangling. He's about to climb onto one of these bikes, and then the ground just erupts in Gatling gunfire. <laughs> And the bikes just get wrecked in the same process. And then he just goes right in the back and he falls over top now. And you're pretty sure that has to be, that has to be it. He's got to be dead as he's now fallen on top of these bikes. And you hear through the radio, oh, yeah, I, got, I got him. I, I got him. That's like what? That, was that 2%? Now, Wally, I did tell you that I, I wanted you to hit the bikes and not, not Edgar. But oh. I got to say. You know, still, that's definitely two percentage points because you did a hell of a job there considering you're covered in urine and all that. So we're going to drop down right now and we're going to bring his body inside. If it's alive or dead, then, then yeah, we, I mean, missions. Operation FUBAR went off exactly as planned. I think the other half of the bottle was actually cream soda, but it's still stinky. I, I had no doubt. I had, Just don't tell Gwen that's what it is, all right? We're just going to keep our zip, zip, zip it. Okay. But let's go. Let's go get the body. All right. So at this point, I'll, I will, let's break initiative as everything's kind of uh, coming to, a, I think at this point, there's, there's so much craziness at this point. And I think a lot, most of the threats are accounted for. One of the guys is being, I think Brendan's being devoured now and disemboweled by pigs while mm-hmm. Gail and one of the McGregor guards is trying to save him. Uh, the, one of the Bennett guys, one of the Bennett guards has already taken a chunk of the ceiling to his head and he's inside the building, which is by the way, starting to just sort of slowly fall down on top of itself. Uh, and then the other one is being, is like, it's sort of getting chased by a pig. And it's like, you can hear him in the distance as he's just running. Get the frick away from me. As he's continuing to shoot as this other pig chases him down. And so we'll say at this point, you all have a moment to kind of do what you will. What is it you would want to do? Uh, you also would know, I would say before I, I turn it over to you all that more than likely, this guy has automated security. There, a message has been sent off to right. somebody. How far away they are, who knows? But like this, this is not going to go unnoticed. Um, so there is a limited amount of time that you have. But what would you like to do? Hey, is everybody, Calum it's on uh, a boat yet? I think Callum is not actually. Yeah, Callum's Callum, uh, Callum was inside the building, but he, he was running out towards Nikki. So Nikki, you came out. You saw you saw Brendan getting just disemboweled right in front of you. Uh, what's next? Hey, Callum, I'm going to be, uh, I'm, I'm landing, I'm going to land the Belafonte right there. So uh, can you grab Edgar's body, uh, alive or dead or whatever, and then get get the hell on the Belafonte? I'm pretty sure security went out, so we're going to need to uh, burn pretty quick to get out, out of this area. Me, yeah. Me, but okay. First of all, I want to take a photo of, you know, if you've got a camera for your camera, just of, uh, uh, of Brendan. Um, Brendan, just to send it to you know. <laughs> As he's all still holding Selfie. it down. <laughs> <laughs> he's selfie. <laughs> okay. Ninja, Ninja. <laughs> okay. And then you run around to the front of the building. You see Edgar's body, like, just bloodied up and over top of these just wrecked, uh, these wrecked dirt bikes that have just fallen over, destroyed by Gatling and fire. But you get them, throw them over your shoulder. Elvis, there's plenty of space out front. It's not the easiest landing. It's not all smooth, but you can put it, you can put her down. And Callum can get on board with uh, with Edgar's body, you know, slung over his shoulder. Um, what if? What about Freddie, Nikki, and Gwen? So here's the Louise. thing: Nikki, I think, could get any vehicle moving quickly. However, he's not exactly a pilot, so like landing is a different story. Uh, I think I would just try to get us the hell out of here. And I would want to make sure that there's going to be as little uh, pursuit as possible. So I would like to try and skid the rhinestone cowboy across the ground at full speed through whatever's left of this house, just to make sure that it's nice and level. And then we could meet uh, the Belafonte uh, in a field nearby and transfer ships. Okay. Why don't we do a savvy test for you? Uh, <laughs> roll it against the odds. Uh, and I'm also going to want all three of you to roll, let's call it maybe muscle tests to keep yourselves, because uh, this is not going to be a smooth ride. Uh, some, Did wait, I mention wait, that we bef- need to put on seatbelts? Before you do that, can somebody no. uh, put my seatbelt on? Because I can't put my seatbelt on. <laughs> <Just like laughs> I can't brace myself. 
Goblin's trying to put your seatbelt on, on seat as belt. it's happening. Well, they we always need to warn about the seatbelts first. So <laughs> seat it's just polite. All you right, see, I'm Nikki. not a pilot. I don't know that. Uh, how many audience uh, advantages one do we have left? Six, seven, eight, All right, nine, I'm going to use left. that to cancel out my against the odds, if that's okay. Okay, that's perfectly fine, yeah. Uh, I got a nine. Just barely an test. eight for the savvy. Okay, so you successfully just take out the rest Ooh. of the building. There were a couple people up on the balcony still, and you just <laughs> took them out as you fly past some of those McGregor f- folks as that whole building is just slumped down to the ground. Likely, maybe the guy getting chased by the pigs might might make it. There was also the one guy on the ground that had been left inside of the security uh, the security booth tied up. I'm sure one of the pigs probably found him at some point. Uh, but other than that, you just just level this uh, this building. You just grind the rhinestone cowboy across the ground. You just create this small little canyon of dirt. And at some point in the distance, uh, in the waste, you are able to easily uh, you're able to easily reunite with the Belafonte, where Elvis and Callum and Walter in the body of Edgar are there waiting for you. And, um, yeah, let's go ahead and end there, I think. <laughs> Job, <laughs> all according to plan. Job! Plan. Oh, I'm here to tell you, plan foobar, it always works. Always See, works. But some bounties will accept the dead, so I was right. Yeah. Uh, alive. Oh, boy. Well, that did not go the way I thought it was going to go, but <laughs> here we are. Uh, all right. <laughs> some may call us the goon squad, you know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hey, the, oh, the, the, the jig was up. I'm here to tell you, the jig was up. We had to oh, do yeah. something. And, you know, Wally, Wally's ace is on that Gatling gun. I te- I'm here to tell he you. He did some things. Some things were he done. Some things. He comes, he comes mine up, is for stains on his shirt. <laughs> oh, yes. We just need to rethink the buddy system. Because, like, Caleb's great at what he does. Mm. Nikki goes a different direction at times. <laughs> <laughs> He just wanted to look at the other hero. Oh, God. <laughs> we need to figure out who we should pair off with. <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, man. One's a runner, so. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That uh, that did <laughs> not go. That went so absolute. <laughs> just bonkers that I loved it. Like, I'm here to tell you. That's exactly what Elvis was thinking the whole time. He was like, this is <laughs> That, this is the only way this plan's gonna work. I love Mayhem. the color commentary from Elvis throughout. Like I love that. Like like Aaron's He's like, throwing. I just gotta the keep them nervous. If they're time. nervous, then perhaps maybe they'll work better under pressure. You know. Oh, that's and, like, great. Elvis is just bantering with Wally as he's doing like hairpin turns and all yep. this. Like they're talking about popcorn and shit. <laughs> so, what's your favorite type of salt? I oh, personally God. prefer sea salt, sea, but you know, I don't deny yeah. a nice flaky pink salt. Yeah. Delicious. I'm here to tell you, it's the yeah. the Himalayan pink salt. That's where you gotta go. It's, it's got that perfect amount of salty tang to it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you all have successfully apprehended the body of Edgar Bennett, very demented guy. You have. Uh, uh, Callum, you have at least, as far as you know, watched the death of of Brendan McGregor as he's eaten by pigs, uh, and his and his girlfriend and his right hand man were just pulled over by the rhinestone I'm cowboy. Sure. Yeah. Oh my God, this selfie was hilarious. Uh, let's do some clothes and plugs here, and then let's get out of here. Uh, Mark, where else can we find you? Uh, yeah, I'm Mark uh, Cthulhu Kid on Twitter, so just insert some uh, underscores. Uh, I'm one of the gems over at TTRP Theatre. Um, tomorrow we have 7pm uh, CST uh, uh, cult, um, and the thing's not loading, so I have no idea when everything else is. Oh, there we go. Uh, Tuesday, 8pm uh, CST Dungeon World, Kit's Tale. Uh, Friday, we've got Vampire the Masquerade, Fallen Angels, also 8pm. And my game will be back in two weeks, Saturday, just before this. Perfect. 9pm uh, for me. No idea yeah. what's for you. Yeah. Thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure either. I'd actually have to look. I think it's... I think, I think it's, it's five or something. Yeah. Something, uh, two? Well... Two. Oh, two it would be. I think it's two. two. I think you're right. I think it's two. Yeah. Right, 2 p.m. Uh, then uh, Aaron, what's going on on Garblag? Let's see. On Garblag Games on Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we'll be returning to Ben's City of Mist game. 
Then on Tuesday at the same time, Millie will be running some Coriolis. Then Wednesday, we will be starting episode one, character creation for Dan, first time GM on Garblag Games, is going to be running some Soulbound, Age of Sigmar. So that'll be fun for our Warhammer Wednesday. Thursday, uh, we will be the seeing the finale of season one of Knaves of Dusk, where the Red Ledgers, including our, uh, including Jeff, will uh, attempt to find their way out of a significant hole that they've dug, uh, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, I expect deaths. It should be very entertaining. Then Thursday night, uh, if everything goes well, we'll be back at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Gar Garblag North America, where uh, Jeff and I will be punching Nazis and cultists in some Octoon Cthulhu, Modifius' 2D20. Hell yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's, it's been too that's, long. It's been too long of a break. Oh, goodness. Yeah. And we left off on a cliffhanger on that, too. We're surrounded. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, surrounded. Man. Just yep. just in, in loads of trouble. And Matt's learning. He's spreading his people out. I'm no longer as effective <laughs> as I once was. It's so good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Steven, I know your game's uh, on break, uh, but uh, tell us about Haunted West. What's, what's coming up? When is it coming up? The good, the mad, the unholy. A Haunted West game over on Adventures and Lollygagging. Oh, wait, that's right here. Uh, we play <laughs> uh, 9 p.m. Central, right? It's 7 p.m. my time. Uh, it We're starting Arc 2 on November 1st. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, the posse uh, got into some trouble, but got out of some trouble in Arc 1. Uh, Arc 2, they'll be getting into even more trouble. Uh, we'll be having a couple familiar faces return, uh, but it's a revolving cast. Uh, so there will be a couple new faces too. Should be a lot of fun. Fantastic! Did you just see what Hero Sevenfold just dropped in the chat? That's brilliant. It should be the good, the, good, the, bad, the bad, and the Zenobi. Did I did I tell you I'm writing up um, I'm writing up a a landmark entry for our heart game, and it's called Zenobi, the Bleeding Hollow. And so I'm doing. Oh, I like, love it. It's basically what the landmark ended at, and so I'm I'm doing a little write up of it. I'm gonna share it when I'm done. But yeah, I, I appreciate cool. that a character as awful as Zenobi has. Uh, some le it left an impression how about that <laughs> i mean it it's zenobi zenobi you know? it's, obviously it's, it's the name of the place it's zenobi it's the whole place uh i just dropped a couple links in chat as well if you're interested in getting your own copy of orbital blues the folks over at soul Med but publishing have been very kind to give us a uh, some affiliate links so if you head over there uh, to the links i just dropped in chat and twitch and if you're watching this later on youtube check the description uh, you get your own copy of Orbital Blues or some of the other wonderful stuff at Soul Muppet. Uh, we're fans also of Best Left Buried, really good stuff. And there's Stygian Library as well, or Stygian. Um, so some really great stuff over there. A lot of indie, a lot of great indie games uh, you can kind of pick up. Uh, as for the rest of us uh, here at Lollygaggers, uh, our next game will be Monday as we're going to go back to Savage Worlds. We're playing some Deadlands as we're working our way through the Blood Drive campaign. Uh, we will be on Friday, a hunter. It'll be hunter. Uh, we'll see uh, basically everyone, but Mark, unfortunately, I think, uh, all the rest of you will be in that, that game is uh, our, our good friend long is out. Uh, we will meet Ashley's new character, uh, as, uh, that is one of the games where I've killed Ashley in recently. Yep. Uh, it's, they're hard to keep track of cause there's been a lot of them <laughs> lately. Uh, and then, uh, and in a week, we'll be back with more Orbital Blues. Uh, I think we'll be down to Steven that week, but the rest of us will be here uh, with uh, some ram some fallout of what just happened. You'll uh, become much more efficient. <laughs> yeah. Nicky's going to get his suit fixed. Fix that yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It takes way too long. <laughs> it takes way too long. <laughs> it's going uh, to be perfect. Oh, yeah. But thank you to everyone who hung out. Thank you to the players. You guys are all awesome. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoy this game. I just like the style of it. I just like the, the craziness of it. It's a lot of fun. It's zany uh, and it's silly, but it's also threatening at the same time. And I like that combination of things. Thank uh, you for all those upper hands that we got from the audience. Much yes. appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to go ahead and raid. Uh, who's up? Looks like boys, the Baltic star are still up. So let's raid them. Uh, they sometimes play orbital blues as well so follow the raid um uh, say hi to them follow their channel follow all channel if you can and uh we'll catch you next time so bye-bye good night cheers <laughs>